We are all <laughs> professionals here, as we are here for the streamers. Uh, streamer in 2021 recap. Hello, everybody. My name's Gavin. I'm joined by a very, very illustrative panel. I'm so actually happy to be here tonight with you guys. Holy shit. Uh, how's Glad to be here. Yeah. We've got uh, so so I'll go in order uh, or I'll let me let me preface the panel first. So uh, this is the streamers in 2021 panel. Uh, the exact title we gave it in the Discord was um, the streamers in 2021 and onward panel, which uh, we'll be going actually a little bit in both ways. We'll be talking about previous years and future years, um, and I'll uh, kind of give the context for everyone as I gracefully, or at least as gracefully as I can, introduce everyone. First off, we have uh, Fresh from the Fridge, aka Yaz. How are you doing, friend? I'm doing pretty well. Um, just second coffee is not enough to keep me awake, apparently, but, um, you know, just uh, awake for the panel. That's all that matters. <laughs> but yeah, otherwise, I'm doing pretty well. Thanks for asking. Fresh from the Fridge is a longtime Twitch streamer um, who we are great friends with. He uh, is personally my... Uh, I, 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 I am just very inspired and uh, by the effort he puts into his stream and I always enjoy chatting with him about his ideas uh, on his stream and mine and it's just a, it's a really good time every time I have the honor of chatting with Yaz. Um that's really nice of you. <laughs> we have the one and only I feel like he needs walk up music with the uh with the great cheering he's getting in chat, but we have Pushing Hat himself. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even see all the the chat messages. You are so, yes. getting hyped up. It's me. Everybody, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. When uh when they're not watching hour long video essays on YouTube, Pushing Hat can be found on Twitch rambling, being very inconsistent with what they're playing. He is also uh my wonderful partner for It Takes Two Game of the Year this year, and that was still one of my highlights of this year of streaming, and I'm still so grateful for it. Um, as I'm saying this, by the way, please feel free to post your Twitch chat links in uh, my chat, in whatever chats you are. This is being restreamed to a few places, so if you are part of one of our restreamed audiences, thank you so much for joining. We appreciate you uh, chilling with us. This stream is here for uh, all of us as streamers to kind of just like, you know, steal sharpness steel tonight. That's what we're going for. Um, three steps far with his second appearance tonight, first one on webcam. How are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Kind of excited to be here. Three Steps Far has a very unique perspective into the uh, into the stream tonight. He's actually a new streamer. He is very new. Has only done his first few inaugural streams, but has expressed interest in it. And I thought it would be great to have him along, kind of just to give that like just starting off perspective, because all of us have been there, and I'm sure all of us. Uh, I don't want to make him a lightning rod for like too much overbearing advice but i think it is good to kind of like have people who are really long into this and people who are really young into this and that's uh that's kind of why uh, i'm really happy three steps far is here with us tonight we have our own very own vtuber slash png tuber uh mr valiant knight how are you doing today sir doing well how about yourself man the stream's been pretty great so far i appreciate it dude valiant knight uh probably one of our most consistent streamers on the server you can find him at twitch.tv slash valiant knight gaming every monday wednesday and friday who and he streams a wide variety of games as well so you'll see him uh specific you'll see him doing a little bit of everything he has a little bit of everything for everyone um, also has a dope ass overlay and uh is very cool what you've managed to do into this discord call tonight yeah, uh, well, I couldn't have done it without you telling me it existed. So Doing my best. <laughs> and then finally, we have Iskin, who, uh, in my opinion, kind of... Uh, well, first off, how are you? I'm doing good, and I'll go ahead and say what you maybe wouldn't say, is that if Valiant's the most consistent streamer here, I'm probably the least. <laughs> that wasn't what I was going to say, but, I mean, sure, that is kind of... That is true, I was going to say that Iskin probably rounds out as someone who uh, is not at the fledgling steps of being a new streamer, but uh, is still, uh, I would say, I don't know if you would describe it as this, but uh, trying to find exactly where you want your footing to be. Not necessarily that you don't have your footing, but like, okay, what do I want to do with this? And, I'm at uh, the stage where I'm kind of trying to decide what streaming looks like for me in my life. Right. And, and frankly, that is... Uh, one amazing topic to talk about this stream and i think all of us probably have opinions on that question coming up or when we had that question in the past 
So, with all that said, thank you everyone for joining me tonight. Um, this panel might go a little longer than our last few, because we have a lot to talk about, but we'll try to get everyone in bed at a reasonable time. Uh, we have quite a few questions that I have got lined up for you guys, uh, and I'll start with a really basic one since we do have time. Um, Gaz, I'll start with you. What or who prompted you to start streaming in the first place? What made you decide, I want to do this, and this is something I want to put actual time and effort into? Yeah, um, actually, it wasn't streaming specifically that kind of got me into streaming. I started with uh, recording some YouTube videos and, you know, all that, um, all that good stuff. And uh, my biggest inspiration was probably, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Super Best Friends Play. I um, mm -hmm. actually got really into them when Matt and Wooly specifically played Donkey Kong Country 1. And I, that was like one of my, literally the very first video game I've ever played ever. And just seeing them enjoy my own, my own nostalgia while also being hilarious just kind of sparked some inspiration and just kind of got me into recording. And then I had some friends who also, you know, joined me and joined in with me on that, ha uh, that habit, that hobby. And one day we decided to say, hey, let's, let's just stream it instead. So we popped on our PS4, we clicked the share button, and we mm -hmm. did our thing. We had one of our friends chatting with us. And we realized how much more fun that was because there was that interaction, that back and forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just kind of kept going from there. But because the PS4 doesn't really offer very much in terms of like overlays, alerts, et cetera, et cetera, I kind of want to move my platform over to PC. But unfortunately, I don't have... I didn't have a computer that could handle anything at the time, especially streaming. So, like, League of Legends ran at 10 frames per second. It was awful. So, what I did was when my, my brother went on vacation uh, for a month, I, I, this is the very first time I ever st uh, streamed seriously. I took his laptop, installed all the software, OBS, I set up my overlays, everything there, set everything up, streamed for that month, like, almost any time mm. I could. The funnest, I like, the, it was just, it was just a blast the entire time. And then as soon as he came back, I, like, I uninstalled everything, brought everything back where it was, and I said, hey, look, I'm gonna get myself a PC. <laughs> and we kind of, I just kind of saved up the money. And, that's like a superhero um, origin yeah. story. <laughs> that's great. Well, more like a super villain one. <laughs> I did take when? his laptop without telling him. Well, how, he still how, doesn't know. How old were you at the time? Uh, this was four years ago, so twenty-two. Okay, so not that, not 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 that. I feel like different streamers have different origin stories for like when they started, like when they did their first stream too. Because I was like a kid mm -hmm. trying to figure out technology too, and I was like seventeen or something when I did my first few Twitch streams, and like I didn't mm -hmm. know what the fuck was going on, and it was kind of like helping me like discover like broadcast in general. Anyways, uh, that's besides the point. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. I just want to say like, in terms of like making content stuff, that was way back in like closer to later high school like 17 when i started mm -hmm. to like kind of like really drum up the you know just kind of have an understanding of what the process and everything involved but yeah either way it was it's just been a really interesting journey throughout yeah pushing hat what what prompted you to start to become the pushing hat uh well i was among the wave of like kids in like the late 2000s early 2010s that watched like let's plays on youtube and stuff and i was like damn man i want to do that i like playing games that sounds cool i should do that and it went just awfully it went just terribly because like i just didn't have the technology i didn't have the knowledge and uh, i wasn't like funny <laughs> i wasn't entertaining <laughs> i was like like a sophomore in high school trying to be funny by copying other people. Uh, but, you know, off and on, I kept, like, trying, and then I'm not trying, and now I'm trying, and I'm not trying. And then I got, like, my own setup. Like, I actually had the technology. Uh, I'm still not funny. I don't know how that's going to work. <laughs> but we're, 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 <laughs> we're, we're doing our best now to, uh, I want to be the person that I wanted to be back then, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I so that's that. really it's just like you know pewdiepie i want to be pewdiepie but not anymore i don't want to be pewdiepie anymore <laughs> that's oh my gosh i love that a lot iskin <laughs> what started what what was your initial inspiration what prompted you to want to start streaming um so i was always somebody who was much more honestly i still am someone who tends more to watch like youtube videos and stuff 
Uh, and my inspiration for streaming actually was you, Gavin. And it was, um, you mentioned in your keynote, uh, the year you had your milestone, uh, your goal of streaming three times a week. And that was probably the first time I like consistently watched somebody for more than like a stream or two or a single series on their channel. And, uh, it was interesting watching you set a goal like that and reach it over the course of a year. And, um, that was kind of what first put the idea in my head. It took me a year or two before I kind of, before the pieces kind of came together for me to figure out what I wanted to do and, um, and such. But that was my initial, that was the initial, uh, uh, little brain seed. Okay. I feel like, again, this is kind of the, um, Obama giving himself a metal meme, right? Me asking that question. I kind of half thought that because we, because it, it kind of like is with our last panel, we talked about community and like people just being interested in each other's hobbies. Like you build it and they'll come. And I feel like, uh, I feel like I'm about to ask, uh, three steps far the same question. I feel like we might get maybe a similar response, but maybe not. I don't know. What, what have you got? What, uh, what prompted you to start streaming, uh, or who? Honestly, it was watching you guys watching you, watching a couple other streamers. I just kept thinking, huh, you know, that looks really fun. I might like to try that sometime. And so I did try that, and uh, I found out that streaming requires more than the average PC. So just kind of started building stuff up over time. Got a nice, decent PC, got the proper gear, and uh, thought I'd give it a try. So far, I'm having fun. That's like such a wholesome, I love it answer. Valiant Knight, I feel like you, um, I, I'm very curious to hear your answer to this because like out of everyone here, I feel like you've got like the most like stream brand idea, perhaps like when I, when I see your stream, I'm like, well, how did you, where, what, what led you to like focus so much on your stream the way you have? I'm curious what your initial prompt inspiration was. Uh, well, you know, back when I was a young knight, uh, <laughs> uh no, I, honestly, Gavin, I don't know when you started streaming, for one. I, I haven't picked up your stream, I didn't pick up your stream until, like, a couple of years ago. But 2015, uh, there were some guys at work who were streaming and making YouTube videos off of their streams, and I was looking at some of their videos because we were talking about it on at break, and I'm like, you know, this looks kind of fun. So I asked him how he did it because he was playing his Xbox and getting it through his PC and everything, and I hadn't really looked into the world. And he told me about like the Elgato capture cards and all that, so I I, I bought an old one off of him, which is actually the one I'm still using. Uh, six years later. That's really cool. <laughs> and uh, I set it up on my absolutely crappy Alienware pre-built PC that I felt bad about having, but I didn't want to put the effort into actually building a PC at the time. And managed to put together a couple of streams of Shadow of Mordor. Well, my setup wasn't optimal, so I put it down. I stopped. I, I, I put it to the wayside and just played games on my own, having fun. Watched a few streams here and there. Uh, and then it wasn't really until I started watching you again that I was like, you know what? I'm more knowledgeable now. I have a little bit more drive, I think, maybe. I want to do this. It's like fun. So you could say that you're an inspiration to me on that as well. You you got me back into it. And then uh, from there, I just kind of ran with it. Like, I I'm still finding my footing. It's been, what? Uh, a little over a year since I got affiliate, and probably about half a year or so before that when I started streaming uh, again. Um, so, yeah, I just, like, I figured, you know what? People know me as Valiant Knight from, like, all over the place. Uh, it's been my username since middle school on Xbox. Uh, so I just kind of ran with the Knight theme. It's always been something I liked, and... Um, when my webcam decided that it wasn't going to be functional for me, I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go with a PNG. Uh, whenever I finally get around to getting one, and uh, Alan6 in chat, shout out to you for doing my emotes, which I am currently using one as a PNG. 
And then uh, from there, I'm like, you know what? I need I need an overlay. I'm seeing everybody use overlays. I'm not artistic enough to make this happen on my own. So I took some of my, uh, my Twitch proceeds and, and paid somebody to get me some overlays. To make me some overlays, actually. And they did a wonderful job. And I'll probably go back to them if I want more stuff. But uh, yeah, so what got me back into it was you. And I'll um, I'll just really reiterate, I really do love the look on your cam right now. I think you've put that together really well. Um, yeah, I was, I was kind of wondering what I was going to do for a background, and I'm like, you know what? I can do this. This works. Very creative. I'm going to ask a bit of a fun question next, okay? I'm sure everyone, I, I actually sent this one ahead of time. I'm sure everyone has maybe been dwelling on it a little bit. But what innovations have you come up with at your live streams, maybe um, recently in the past year, or, and, it's, whichever, you can do both, what what are innovations that you're thinking about that you plan to use coming up next year? Um, for instance, I'll answer for myself first, um, I'm really proud of kind of the little slides award case that we've made for our graphics look, so whenever we're in break... You see, when we beat a game, we add it to the list, and you see it rotate throughout the year, and it just, like, gets larger. That's kind of the innovation that I've been most proud of this last year. I'm curious to hear everyone else's thoughts. Um, I'll start with, uh, I'll start with pushing that. Uh, innovations are kind of funny for me, because my stream is extremely bare bones. Um, I, instead of having, like, any sort of, like, thing like Valiant's guy with like his nice background and all that. I basically commissioned someone to draw a Pusheen with a hat and I was like, there you go, that's all you get. <laughs> that's all that's what you got. <laughs> I was like, that's my BRB screen, that's my starting soon screen. I don't need anything else for that. Uh my innovation is I'm going to stream hopefully longer than I did this year. <laughs> it's it's, it's, my innovations from like when I started to be like, oh, I want more technology. I need the technology to be there. But I have all that now. I, I don't think I need a whole lot there. So I really think I need to, as we said earlier, I need to build it and then they'll come. And 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 something I want to mention uh, that you're joking about the amount you streamed. Um, a lot of people in this call have been like have not have streamed at varying lengths this year um a lot of hiatuses a lot of streaks going on we got a little bit of everyone so i just want to mention that i put this panel together not because everyone here's an active streamer every single day but because everyone here is interacted with streaming culture in a way that i was interested in pulling you guys for this panel right so pushing i mean i appreciate that answer it's basically exactly like what i'm curious about like what uh what innovations do you have you had? And that's a great origin story as well to the pushing that, right? And um and you just taking that and running with it, right? Um Iskin, what have you got? What uh what have you done that you're proud of innovation wise? What do you think you want to do coming up in the future, if and or both? Um so kind of similarly to pushing, this was uh this is this is something I kind of um thought about a lot when I f was getting ready to start originally and then uh, kind of stopped thinking about um, namely like uh, I know like you Gavin you refresh like you mentioned you, you like to refresh your graphics you like to evaluate make sure that um, what you're doing is still what you want to be doing and um, which is a good thing to do uh, it's just it hasn't been so much something I've prioritized and um so I, I haven't had a whole lot of what i would call innovations so much other than um, a couple of times when i've had opportunities uh just uh something that i enjoyed doing this past year a couple of times is being a little bit more laid back about if i saw a game on that like just had just come out or something um didn't Rather than thinking a lot about, oh, would this make a good stream? Would this do that? Would this? Uh, there was a game that I picked up. I remember I literally was at work on lunch, and it had just come out, and I just the concept of it tickled my fancy, and I was like, I'm gonna go home and stream that, and uh, it was a pretty fun stream, and it was just uh, that. That was probably the main thing for me. It was just it kind of solidified that sometimes the best thing is just. Uh, something you're interested in, even if only for that one day, and just go home and stream it. 
Um, for stuff for planning to use, that's uh, I think that more goes to another question that we've got later down the line. So I'll hold off on my answer for that one. Valiant Knight innovations from uh, the past or future that you uh, that you're planning on or have planned on. Uh, well, I'm I'm not really creative in that way, so I tend to take other people's ideas and run with them. Kind of make them my own afterwards. Um, so I think the best one that I took was was your game votes. I mean, I've only started it fairly recently, but my little Discord, I get a little bit more interaction from people finding out what they want to see or what they might like to see. And uh, basically also kind of lets me, I mean, it lets me tailor my streams to my people. And that's that's really what what it comes down to with that one. But I I, I enjoy using it, and it's it's a lot of fun. Three steps far, and I'm going to uh, preface this knowing that, like we'd mentioned at the top of the hour, that you are uh, a more or less fledgling streamer. Not that you are not incredibly entertaining to watch when I have watched you, but I imagine that you've got plans in the future more than plans you've enacted at this point. So I'm curious to see, to hear uh, what type of things do you have planned or what's something really kind of like, maybe not, it doesn't even have to be quote unquote innovative, but what's like a feature that you've got planned that you're thinking about or that you want to try? Admittedly, uh, I haven't thought all that far ahead. I'm still trying to find my feet in streaming. Like, you can see my backdrop is just the wall that doesn't have my furniture. I made a joke about it before stream started, but my camera is actually sitting on a used gas station cup because I couldn't mount it on top of my computer. So, uh, I've got work to do. I want to get a nice backdrop that I can use, maybe a green screen. I want to get a camera that can actually be mounted and get some effects to it. And more than anything, I just want to kind of find out what kind of streamer I am, you know? Like, I've only done a few of them, and I've had fun so far, but I'm still far from innovating anything. I feel like I need to discover things first. Makes sense to me. And that totally counts as a great answer for that question. I appreciate it. Yes, I kind of saved you for last because I'm very excited to hear your answer because we've had discussions about uh, each other's streams before. What innovations have you uh, come up with that you've used or plan to use? Yeah, um, actually, they aren't necessarily innovations because they're not necessarily new ideas. But um, there are some ideas from the past that I plan to employ onto my channel, but at a much larger scale and will plan to use uh, now. So... To give context to what Gavin might be talking about here is, um, so around late 2020, like December, November, somewhere around that time last year, uh, when I was still streaming at that point, I drastically changed my channel's format so that it basically excluded games entirely and only had content that was related to uh, <clears throat> creative, uh, creative, um, anything creative. So things like um, perler art, uh, like stuff like stuff like this. And um, yeah, so what I decided to do instead was I changed my channel's format to involve processes, the process of learning skills that I found a lot of interest in. So the thing is I found in a lot of streams is that it it's really showcases the ability of those who are really good at something. It's like, for example, like Gavin was talking about earlier um, with speed running, you really only see the best of the best, um, you know, like we, he mentioned Cable Part, they, they, he's like probably the most popular speedrunners I, I, I can, I've found so far. But um, of course, there's nothing wrong with that. But I want to showcase the process of learning a skill from literally the very first step, as, as, far, as, I, I, as, as far back as I could begin. And the biggest example of this um, from the, my, my, streams, my stream career's past was when I decided to learn about how to make chocolate. This came to me in a dream. I literally woke up one day at, with the final thought in my head being just having tr these truffles, like literally just chocolate truffles and like drizzling icing or whatever it was, something on top of it. And it set perfectly instantly. And mm -hmm. that just drew a lot of inspiration for me to just, hey, let's I, I like cooking. And I kind of do want to try this out. So let's give that a shot. So I streamed all of my research on the process, the tools, 
the the methods you use the like even the smallest nuance like for example there's a specific degree of temperature that cocoa butter crystallizes in that uh, that gives chocolate structural integrity that doesn't let it melt in its hand in your in, in your hand sorry and yeah so i learned research anything based the any anything that would help me get to the point where i can actually put that into practice and when i finally tried making it it my first attempts were uh, almost complete failures. But the thing is, that's going to, that's inherently going to be part of the process. So I want to showcase those failures, but also the, le the lessons I learned and rinse, repeat. Maybe I'll succeed. Maybe I'll do something else like on top of that. And regardless of all like the metrics, like viewership, um, subs, all that good stuff, it was still some of the most fun I've ever had on stream. And um, I still can take something away from it, regardless of its success. And uh, I, inv I plan to involve that in the near future, but with, with gaming as well. I mean, I'm not going to take that away, but that's that um, the forefront of my stream is going to be involving a lot of like the um, just the, just trying to gain something beyond like, you know, just the, the streaming mm -hmm. part of it. Just uh, to involve people, other people, to maybe draw inspiration, uh, to or have them draw inspiration from what I show as well. That's my biggest thing. That uh, I I've heard. That's the second time I've heard the chocolate story now, and I'm just like <laughs> secondhand inspired as I was the first time I've heard it. Um, that's I'm really looking forward. And if you look at if you look at Yaz's stream, he literally does have a count. You have a countdown to. Uh, something yeah yeah um actually uh so january 8th is it, okay so i titled this stream uh to be called tw uh fftf2 like the, the the basically a giant overhaul of my stream it's gonna be january 8th where i basically make an announcement of all that stuff i planned like like basically the biggest um the largest piece of content i will ever like i've ever created and like scripts filming acting is involved and i'm really giving a lot of myself into this again regardless of its success it's just i'm just taking in a lot of a lot of that process and just really building up from there and yeah so january 8th 7 p.m pst is when that's gonna happen so yeah thanks for Save the day. yeah thanks for shooting that. yeah thanks um i have a two-part question coming up for the panel um and i'll ask part one first uh, and you'll you'll obviously know exactly what part two is going to be as soon as I ask part one. Uh, Iskin and to everyone else, what were your streaming goals in 2021, and did you achieve them? Why or why not? Um, so I didn't really go out of my way to set any main goals for 2021 in streaming, uh, outside of just the kind of the obvious metric based things like hitting affiliate. Um, and I had a couple of specific games that I did want to stream in specific time windows. Uh, and unfortunately, I didn't really hit those um, goals. And it's not really a mystery to me why or anything. I did have um, a couple of life things happen this year and last year um, that injected some uncertainty into it. And uh, I've always been someone who kind of struggles being resilient through things like that. So... Uh, streaming, my streaming definitely fell off as a result of that. Um, but I'm coming into the end of the year. I'm trying to focus on taking lessons learned from this year into next year. Valiant streaming goals in 2021, and if you achieve them or not. So I'll back it up just a little bit there. Uh, this I didn't be come into this. I, I didn't come into to 2021 with, with any goals. Uh, but throughout the year, I, I realized that streaming was draining me massively. And as part of that, I set a personal goal to relax, to, to chill, to enjoy the streams more. And I think, I, I think I've achieved that. Uh, I mean had people pop in and be like hey man you're chill how are you so chill are you on drugs no but uh <laughs> i mean I, I still get hyped i still have fun i get energetic here and there but i mean my I, I i ended up with a goal of 
of relaxing and enjoying my enjoying streaming and i i believe i've achieved that as far as goals for next year i think once again i'm going into a new year with with no goals set uh because i don't really know where i'm going with this Mm -hmm. and let me um i actually i will reverse it back to skin as well let me go ahead and just ask part two of the question uh well since instead of splitting it up what are your goals for 2022 and what what could what would help you achieve those goals like what do you need to achieve those 2022 goals or do you not want to go in with a goal right i mean that's a very valid answer that valiant just brought up right yeah sorry um, Gavin. i didn't mean to flow into that <laughs> fine. it makes sense right yeah so uh there's kind of not to wax eloquent on this too much but there's multiple kind of schools of thought on the importance of goal setting and whether that really helps you achieve uh and get success and there there's enough there are as many schools of thought on it as there are people who have theorized about it um but i've kind of always approached things from a uh from a more laid back um let's kind of see what happens point of view and i actually want to take this year to kind of do it the other way and um folk or kind of go in from the beginning with some concrete goals in place so i did actually set some goals for 2022 and um i'm kind of a numbers nerd so there's a lot of twos in 2022 so 20 my theme for 2022 is kind of a year of twos or at least of multiples so um one of the things I enjoyed this past year that I kind of was dragged into a little bit kicking and streaming by someone else in this voice call was uh, collaborative streams. Um, <laughs> yeah, when when uh, when Valiant's like, hey, I have this game I bought and you're the only person who will play it with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Listen, man, so, it's five bucks on Steam. I'll buy it for you. Just play it. <laughs> so... Uh, that was a lot more fun than I kind of anticipated it would be. And one of the, one of the uh, benefits of it was that um, because Valiant's a very consistent individual, uh, it kind of dragged me into being consistent while we were doing that as well. Um, so that's something I want to do more of is collaborative streams like that. But also I would like to do some more competitive streams. Um, I think when we played Battlefield five towards the end of the year, Gavin's leaning forward. I know why Gavin's leaning forward, but uh um that was pretty fun and that was the first time i did anything pvp related <laughs> on my stream <laughs> um so <laughs> there are a couple of uh kind of series i guess i have in mind for next year um but my main goal for the year is to you know kind of hold to the theme of twos here is to try to stream <laughs> Valiant, is to stream uh at least twice a week Okay. Um, what will help you do that? What will help you achieve that yeah. twice a week goal? Uh, well, part of that is going <laughs> to be um, I, I'm kind of following, trying to follow Valiant's example here, and your example from a couple of years back as well, is just like having specific days that uh, I straight up have slotted in that I'm streaming on these days of the week. So it's it's not just a, oh, what night am I free this week? Okay, I can stream that night kind yeah. of a thing. Um, that helps a lot because when you you actually plan to do something and you make that commitment with your help that helps um or to do when you make that commitment with yourself that helps uh and also because i'm planning to do more collaborative stuff with other people um it uh helps keep you more accountable doing that way um but like i said on the other hand of it on the other side of it one of the other goals is i want to do more uh competitive stuff um, and this actually was a much more recent thing because it was uh, when you played Ghost Runner the other night. Um, I uh, was very sleep deprived that weekend because <laughs> I ended up spending multiple hours one night when I was supposed to be sleeping uh, speed running Ghost Runner instead. And uh, it was a lot more fun than I thought it would be. And I got sucked way more into it than I thought I would. Uh, and it's something I'd like to try doing some more of. Um, you but... know, you've referenced that story so many times in just the past few days. It must have really like triggered something. We should, we should, we should, we need to talk about that more. Well, it. Um, trying to talk about this without like getting too much into like my personal side of things, but um, I try to focus a lot, and I, I pivot my stream bio. But I try to focus on uh, 
development and um, active improvement um, in personal life as well as in streaming, trying to apply that more to streaming. Um, so it's one of the reasons I really enjoy games like uh, I really liked playing Sekiro because it's a game that really teaches you to get better at it as you're playing it, which is just really fun to me. Um, but then with Ghost Runner, when I first played the game, I was very laid back in how I was approaching the game. Very much a me approach to things, how I, just how I usually do things. Uh, and then watching you do it was you played the game very differently than how I did. And then you kind of threw a gauntlet at me. Um, so kind of sitting down and forcing myself to play the game that way in a very with a very competitive focus and then seeing you know quickly improving and just like ha like you kind of mentioned this is an iron sharpens iron kind of a thing uh it was very uh it, it was it was that basically it was just it was having that direct competition with somebody else and just seeing both of us actively getting faster at it and it was um it was cool and it's not something i've given myself the opportunity to do very often so i'd like to do it more uh i'll only mention because i've kind of talked for longer than i meant to already about this but um I'll mention one series that I'm hoping to do. I don't know if the name's final on this or anything, because it's literally just been like a couple of days I've been thinking about this, but, uh, um, and Gavin will be happy. But uh, one of the series that I'm hoping to do on my stream is a first to two series, which of course is because I'll that's, uh, uh, yeah, you'll believe it when you see it, I know, but. Um, essentially that's take that, that name comes from, cause that's, tra that's traditionally, uh, the fighting game set. So, uh, that's two out of three or first to two. So we're hoping to do that in 2022. That's one of my mainstream goals is to pick some difficult genres of game and get better at them. So Listen, we've, man, you can't just break your streak of not playing fighting games like that. So we've had the uh, we've had the Iskin, uh, yeah. First to two, by the way, is a fucking genius name. That's like up on the level of surrender at twenty to me, right? Like I love that. Repent in chat is calling it out. First, first to two in twenty twenty two. Um, so 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 Iskin and Valiant have collabed. Me and Pushing have done a collab. So next up is uh, Yaz and Three Steps Far. They're just gonna. Do some co actually f jokingly, uh, Yaz and Last Place Finish just had a extended, really cool collab stream that I'm still kind of working my way around stream clips and vods for. Um, I'll take a quick a quick detour. So Vex J in chat, uh, Gavin, do you remember like two years ago when you hosted a few D and D one shots to help beginners learn to play and you advertised on Reddit? I do remember that, and I think about it often. Because we're doing a recap stream, 2022 recap stream, and that's something I kind of want to do next year. And I, I very purposely don't stream those, right, whenever I came up with the idea, because I don't want, like, the players to be content, right? I'm just trying to teach people how to play d and I'm not trying to, like, make a quick TikTok out of it, right? But I do remember <laughs> that, and D&D &D is still a big part of my life, and we had just talked earlier to stream about D&D &D being a major event next year on my stream but i do remember that i don't know how you found me but that is a blast from the past and i've every once in a while when i have five days free i'm like you know what i should do three years back i did a one shot to help people learn how to play dnd i should do that again i thought about that just last week i get it as a constant thought i'm gonna move on to the panel uh yes goals in 2021 <laughs> did you achieve them goals in 2022 how will you achieve them okay well um, for 2021, I, just like Valiant, I never had any goals. Um, I actually never planned to stream at all. Um, early, like January 7th of this year, I quit streaming thinking I was never coming back. Um, a lot of reasons, uh, a lot of personal reasons, but, um, either way I'm back in it now and I'm really happy to, but, uh, <clears throat> a few months passed by during the, um, during, like after after I quit, and I just started to come up with a bunch of ideas for content, and I started to take them down between studying and whatever time I could scrape. And uh, eventually, I came to the point where I decided to build a chat bot on my stream because um, I don't know, like with with uh, my education, I decided to like take some of the skills I I learned and apply them to the stream as well. So my initial idea for 2021 was to just have that stream 
to have the stream to build the chat bot as a way of like sort of decorating for what I have planned for 2022. And um, from there just went from like, it just basically just went from doing just the chat bot to everything mm -hmm. else in between and just basically being back up and running again to also prepare for 2022 when things are going to be more structured. So basically my biggest goal for 2021 is to have everything I need to for that day and for those plans forward. And do we, sorry for, do we go straight to 2022 now for yep, the next question? Go for it. What's, Great. What were you, what are your goals? Well, you mentioned, we talked about this a few times already, but um, we mentioned the specific date, January 8th, 2022. I swear this isn't a sponsor stream. This Kevin did bring me on to just specifically talk about this. But um, yeah, that's going to be a, the beginning of a huge channel overhaul that I mentioned before titled FFTF2. And that's going to be where I'm announcing all the big events and the changes happening to the channel Fresh from the Fridge. And my goals are related to making sure that those events go as closely as planned as possible. And um, achieving success there requires a lot of foresight and understanding the time and timing. And you know what? Like, um, I even spoke about one of my ideas to Gavin, and he he actually shared his concerns. Like, there's some issues with um with with timing, and I don't want to be too specific about that right now. But you know, I'll drop I'll, I'll drop a name. I'll drop it. I'll drop it now. It's called Yaz times a hundred. And without being specific about that, timing is a very big concern about like getting, making sure that it's that, that plays out the way that it should. Um, and on terms of another big goal is just to make sure that, um, to remember that I'm there to enjoy myself despite the frustrations that might come with all of that stuff, because nothing goes according to plan. Right, you have to work. You 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 set a plan to be a certain way, and when things deviate a certain uh, a deviate uh, away from what you want it to be, you have to sort of make adjustments to stay by, stay on course. And um, I just got to remember that it's about the journey more than the destination. You know, you uh, you referenced uh, us talking about it. You know, the fun part about the story is where we talked about it. Do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we were we were go ahead tell tell them where we were when we had that conversation we were we were in vr chat and i was sitting on a train it was moo cactus i think either next to me or in the seat diagonal to me i forget what avatar he was in uh or, or what moo was in i think um it was their fox avatar i was as i was I, my avatar was travis touchdown and you have gavin being well uh, and Gavin, <laughs> as I don't know what character we call, we call, we we Joe, we call him Navin. Navin, yeah, right, yeah. And we were talking about that, and it was a really serious conversation, despite all that too. He's like, "Yeah, yes, yeah, you know." Um, <laughs> <and> just <laughs> with like ears. Every time I like nodded, the ears would just like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's 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 pretty much that's pretty much uh, the year. Um, and moving forward. Pushing that 2021 goals that were achieved or not 2022 goals that you plan to achieve and how will you do it? Um, so I'm not like a super like numerically goals oriented kind of person. I don't have like a, I need so many average viewers. I need this much time streamed, anything like that. I just have like a vague goal of stream more or something. Um, I did have like, I have, some was kind of like your your like volumes how you did this year like this world we're playing like all these competitive games or we're playing the visual novels i i make it a, a it's kind of a coincidence that happens a lot i'll end up playing like full series it's like i did it back in like 2019 when kingdom hearts 3 came out i mm -hmm. played through all the kingdom hearts games and i i finished with 3 um this year or last year this year this year I played through like all the Resident Evil games because Village was coming out. Um, so I will likely find something else to do that with. I do not have a plan for that right now. But I do have like, I want to do like, you know how you were talking about like Halloween in July or something. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to do something like that as well. I've got all of these like little like horror games that are like maybe like two hours long to five hours long and i'm like i would love to just stack a month 
of just doing all these little games I've got stacked up. I've genuinely just got like a folder full of Ichio games. Mm -hmm. And like, I would just love to break these little games out and just play them like constantly, just bust them out, you know? So that's kind of more of it. It's like, I want to do like some vague thing, you know? It's less like, I need, I need, I need this. I need this certain thing to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I would say I, I succeeded in my goals in 2021 of, of playing through all the Resident Evil games. <laughs> but that's not, it's not like a wow, very impressive of you to have played video games on your <laughs> gaming stream. I don't know, man. There's, there's a lot of games in that series. It, it, yeah, uh, sure. Listen, I'm not going to mess. It was I, if, kind of a pain. <laughs> if you told me your goal for 2022 is to play through all the Final Fantasy games, I'd be... Mm. Okay, let's mm. let's relax. That would take all of 2022. That would take uh, a very long time. Let's discount. Uh, what is it? 11 and 14. No, I gotta play those two. <laughs> gotta play them. I don't care if you can't play 14 right now. You gotta play it. You've got <laughs> three Final. When you need them. When, you, when you've got when you've got Final Fantasy 13, you've got to play through three games. Oh my god! That's oh god. god. But you know what? I get to play Final Fantasy Tactics, which is like a game I've actually played. So that'll be cool. Where does Where does Kingdom Hearts <laughs> fall on the f- timeline? Oh well, you gotta play those too because it's got by, all by the that characters. Logic, characters. By By that logic, watch all the Disney movies too. Yep, you gotta play Epic Mickey. You gotta get your Disney Plus subscription. <laughs> watch all the movies. I have to go out to a theater, find Hamilton, like playing in a theater. I have to go watch Hamilton. Um, <laughs> you can't Marvel about Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Marvel Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Capcom. I'll go to Disney World and vlog. Go to Disney it. World, challenge one of the characters to a fight. That's right. Do a first to, <laughs> do a first to two. Oh, do a first to two, of course. Yeah. I just bring a setup, set it in front of Mickey, crack my knuckles at him. <laughs> Black Sun on my Sora. Um, that's right. That's right. Th- uh, three steps far. Um, go- well. Again, we have a caveat when we ask you questions. What are your goals for 2022? What what's the next do you are, do you want to set goals? What are what are what are things that you want to achieve coming up with your stream next year? I thought about it actually. Um and first were a few kind of basic ones, you know, I'd like to reach this many followers, I'd like to get associated with Twitch, I'd like to you know start doing regular things. And then I thought about it and I realized I don't really care how many people I've got following me as long as I've got a few people that are having fun with me. So I don't have many solid set goals. I'd like to, you know, like I said, I'd like to get a backdrop and a little better camera. I'd like to uh, get a regular schedule going, stream consistently. And I'd like to find something whatever it is that sets me apart from other streamers, just one little thing about me that I can, you know, just be unique with, even if it's just a a funny hat or something. I don't know. It's something that makes it my stream and not just a stream. Pushing hat is like, that's a solid I got my funny hat, man. I got a rack of them on the wall. (laughs) You want one? I'll get you a funny hat. That's a hat. good plan. Hey, tell your head down, Fushin. Can let see you clear? Yeah. There, you go. Do you see it? there we go. Yeah. Nice. nice. I'm right against my mic as well. <laughs> oh my god, I love, love it. it. I feel love like it. I feel like you know we're asking all these like kind of philosophical questions, and some of us are being vague, and some of us are being really specific. But I feel like it always comes down to I want to find that one thing that I do differently. And it, it, it really is just kind of like an essence of the question when you are a smaller streamer or trying to become big or try to solidify your niche in your corner. Like that, that, that really does like, you know, resonate. Um, at, at least with me, I can't speak for everybody, but like, I want to find that too. And yeah, I don't care if it makes unique. me big. Yeah. I think it's sort of a, a thing with like between affiliate and partner, you've got, a gigantic gap you can't just get affiliate and be like okay next step partner because it's mm-hmm. like dude that's yeah that's a million steps you need a whole lot more to get there and it's like 90 percent luck man i'd say more than 90 99 percent luck it's it's a lot Pushin, you can just say that but you have to be an anime vtuber girl you're so know. right. Oh, you're so right. Oh, you, you know what you could piece. do? You could do what Soda Poppin did. 
You could uh, you can make a cute anime girl that's carrying a pushing cat, and you just talk <laughs> out of the pushing cat, and that's your VTuber model. I had thought of like doing something of like a like what Valiant's got, like the PNG tuber thing for days mm-hmm. when I just like didn't want to um to like be on camera or whatever. But I, I just kind of like came and went, and then VTubers became like the big thing. And I was like, son of a bitch, I could have been. <laughs> I could have been on the rise there. You still can be. You still can I be. I still can be. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. The hype's not going away anytime soon. <laughs> I, I have to I have to say the when I when I was doing the VTubing for thirteen Sentinels, it was really refreshing to not like be on camera. Like it was it was nice. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I see the appeal. I think it's probably something that really stuck with me with doing the PNG thing. It's like, okay, I'm not putting effort into fixing my webcam thing because uh this is a lot more relaxing. I don't have to like make sure I take a shower and wear a nice shirt and not have stuff in my beard. I don't know, dude. All before that, all before stuff. we before we started, I saw like <laughs> we mentioned it before. Gavin's got his button up shirt drip going. I was like, <laughs> oh shit, I look so bad right now. I had to go like wash my face and like, shave real quick. I'm like, I'm gonna be on camera. I gotta. <laughs> Someone <laughs> Azure was. When you don't VTube, you're like, oh god, I have to look okay. A- Azure was asking what the dress code for this was, and I said, you know, I'm gonna dress a little sharp, just kind of for the parody of it. And I like mentioned, but this one time, Iskin wore a literal suit to our Phoenix Wright stream, so that you know, I amazing. don't know what will happen. Honestly, I, I just when I saw you in that shirt, I almost put on a suit for the <laughs> gag, but then I realized how much effort that would actually take. And I would sweat through the thing, and I'd just be miserable, just dripping. Yeah, so my chocolate, and just... <laughs> it's just out. in your head, look! <laughs> <laughs> just wait till the end of the stream where you rip the shirt off, and no, I'm not... Oh my god, you it's, promise? It's just volume six reveal, like... Just um, make a sub-only stream. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, here. Rip your, rip your shirt off. My goal for 2022 is only fans. <laughs> <laughs> um... Okay, uh, <laughs> now let me get that out of my head. Um, I kind of want to just, uh, we're, 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 we're coming up to time. Like I mentioned, this panel is going to be a little longer than our previous panels, uh, just because we have the privilege of being the final panel of the night. Um, Twitch chat, if you have any questions for any of our illustrious panel here, please mention it in chat. Um, preferably streaming related, streaming in 2021, 2022 related. But uh, it's an open floor. Does anyone on the panel have any questions or anything they want to talk about streaming, uh, just kind of streaming culture and such? Well, uh, while while we're here, I do want to go ahead and throw the offer out to the other streamers here to uh, collab anytime you want. Just hit me up and find something. I'm I'm more than more than open to it. Cool. This is uh, the part where all of the uh, all of the fans for all the various streamers and Twitch chat bring out their meme questions. Like, when is Pushing <laughs> Hat going to play Danganronpa in 2022? Oh, what the heck? <laughs> That's a real question. <laughs> Man, I'll second that. When are you going to play Danganronpa? Uh, you know, I get, if I'm getting bullied into it, I guess <laughs> I have to do it. <laughs> Pretty good. As I'm someone who plays Danganronpa, Danganronpa I recommend it. Don't give I any feel mean, pressure. I've uh, watched the Danganronpa one anime, so like I know the whole thing, right? I get oh, it. Oh, that's boring. A few, a few great <laughs> oh, questions yeah. in chat. I'll start with a. Uh, I'll start. <laughs> Demolition Dog needs to come, and I want to say Pushing has the face of a millionaire YouTube algorithm content creator. I can. Oh I can my plus gosh, one that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. We got Charlie two point oh here. Uh, Anks asks a very interesting question that I haven't thought about that much. Do you all feel comfortable on camera? Um, well, you know, yes. this is really my best side, so yes. <laughs> I uh, I feel more confident on camera than I do off camera, actually. Like, I'll look in a mirror and I'm like, damn, fuck that. But, I, like, I really like how uh, set I am in this kind of stream studio. <laughs> like, I only get to show the best side of me, right? Like, I mean, that's that's a real, like, theory, right? That, like, you know, it's it's the whole streamers aren't your friend thing. Like... You only see the best side of a streamer when they are in front of you, or whatever, whatever. I just, I'm taking that way too far. I, I, that pivoted way off, but no, I, 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 uh, <laughs> I very much like. I feel very comfortable on stream, but I also second that it's uh, my day job is not being on camera, but being a producer behind the cameraman. So I know how to be talent. Yaz is raising May his I? hand. 
Okay, I actually want to spring this, this uh, throw us back at Anx, uh, A-N-X here. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name correctly here. But um, beyond what we're showing off with being, co- being in front of the camera now, I want to know what you mean by comfortable. Because I think that, well, all of us here are presenting ourselves in front of the camera. So I just want to know, like, is, was there more you wanted us to, to be comfortable with when it comes to, you know, presenting ourselves here? Well, Anx is replying to that. If anyone else has a take on the original version of the question, um, I think I got comfortable on camera pretty quickly. Um, it's definitely kind of weird at first because, like I said, you have to take care of yourself. You have to you have to look all right. And if there's a day where you like don't look all right for whatever reason, it can really kind of stick. Um, but in having like been doing this for three years now i don't care anymore just go ahead look at me with the when i'm at my worst who cares i'll say uh an interesting thing for me and we kind of talked about this a little bit before the stream is that it's not so much i'm decently comfortable on camera but i'm not i'm decently confident in myself being on camera I'm less confident in my space being on camera. And that probably just comes down to the fact that I don't like have a dedicated stream studio uh, where I can just preserve the space in the way it's supposed to look all the time. Like I have to worry about, did I throw anything weird on my bookshelf or like, did I did I, is there a pile of laundry or did my camera, did I, I leave my camera like panned over my unmade bed somewhere or something like that. And, um, did that, Demo uh, stick a figure from his hentai box on his shelf. <laughs> So it's, uh, I, I've, uh, I've spent a lot more, uh, time thinking about like the room around me than I probably need to. Um, but, uh, for me personally, and this might be just because I, I grew up, um, like always doing, I, I, I did, uh, a number of things involving performances. I, uh, was a musician growing up. So I kind of got used to being in front of eyes. So that part of it doesn't bother me so much, but, but yeah, like I said, I just kind of. I really feel the space thing because like on my left shoulder, I'm like perfect set. Love it. Fighting game, dude, board games. And my left side, a hurricane passed through my apartment. I have no way to like set this <laughs> stage correctly. It bothers me quite a lot. I'm still trying to figure that out a little bit. Yeah, we, we were talking about green screens earlier. And like, I, I almost dropped a lot of money on Elgato green screens when I started. And I was like, you know what's cheaper than a lot of Elgato green screens? Plushes. Yes. Rad Sheep is gracing my... Uh... Christmas tree right now off camera, but okay. I feel that. Um, I tried to do a green screen at one point, but there is just no. It's room. so much bigger than you think. There is no room in here for it. It and has to be larger. It no thanks. It has to be larger than your wingspan. It has to be lit correctly. Yes. Green screens are a lot of work. It, interestingly thanks. enough, uh, a friend of mine set up a uh, basically. A, a detachable string that goes across his room and he has a, a, a basically a green screen along it that he slides into place before stream. Like a curtain. Yeah. Like a curtain. That's a cute idea. I've thought about that, but it's still, it's still too much hassle for me. Yeah. Again, it's not for everybody. It's just, it's, it's another potential option for anyone who is interested out there. Yes. I'll let you, um, I'll let you follow up since Anx replied to your reply. Mm-hmm. Honestly, um, there's definitely some days where I feel like turning off the camera, not because I'm uncomfortable, but just because um, there's some days where I want to set a certain vibe and it's a little bit more relaxing. And I feel like when I am present on the camera, it like sort of not necessarily takes away from it, but I feel like with what I'm trying to achieve, um, it's uh, it's it's better to have it off. But I would say I'm still comfortable with being on front of the camera. I just like... Just like in Skin, I do have a bit of a background performance. I did do a lot of theater back in, well, since high school, but it was something that I really did take um, to heart. It was something I took seriously back then. And it's honestly why I enjoy streaming now. So to answer your question, if I'm comfortable, yes, I am. Um, yeah. Um, Thanks. New question from the chat. And chat, we're taking questions, open lobby, uh, Q&A right now. 
Uh, Romulus asks, besides the folks on the panel, what streamers have you been inspired by or just straight up taken ideas from? Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm going to answer this. I'm going to try to be brief since we are running short on time. But uh, I don't know if I've taken inspiration from a specific streamer. Rather than I look at like a lot of amateur streamers and I think, man, like this person could do this to their webcam and it would like help a lot, right? Just little tiny things, correct position for their webcam, being in the center of the frame instead of like, I know early in Zoom days, like for virtual shows, people will talk to you from like over here, right? And like, you'll see streamers on Twitch doing that who are like, they've got one viewer and they're just, you know, maybe they don't really want to be big, that's fine. But like, it's the idea of like, optimizing the little things you can do like matters a lot to me and that's kind of like what i look at big streamers for i'm like what are the things that are, they're doing right that i can apply with the limits of my power without you know awesome animated graphics whilst well, you slideshows and leverage slideshows for instance right how do we make dynamic content without like the budget that bigger streamers have um original question to the panel toss it out to you guys besides folks on the panel what streamers have you been inspired by or straight up taking ideas from I rip most of my vernacular from <laughs> two streamers, Dan Geasley and Northern Lion. They just say some really funny things. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> going to take that. That's a funny thing. It, if I ever say you peace, it's just something from there. I just, <laughs> I just take you peace. And I'm like, that's funny. I'm going to say it constantly now. <laughs> I'm going to use that. That's funny. <laughs> it is funny. People are like, piece, piece of what? Like, piece of shit? And I'm like, whoa! Oh, hey! Not like <laughs> Minecraft server, please. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> I just love taking vernacular. Words are fun. I uh, still say mood a lot from mm. a random group of people from a Discord server from three years ago, and it's just permanently mm. anchored itself to my vocabulary now. Mood. Yep. I like bruh. bruh. I already <laughs> talked about like my entire streaming like the, my entire streaming inspiration being from Super Best Friends Play, um, yeah, just <laughs> tone matters. Getting being being wanting to be kind of like your your idols, I guess maybe idols not the right word, but it's anyone else want to answer this question? I've got another one that a lot oh, of you uh, got. I my own inspiration. <laughs> That's... I am the hype. I've had a bit of inspiration for, um, I mean, it's really what got me into wanting to do more collabs, uh, was from, uh, some of my buddies in another group. Uh, one of them namely being Cam Jack Fisco. And I hope he's lurking cause he tends to, um, he, he's always reaching out to friends of his and, and friends in the group and, and trying to do collabs and stuff like that. And I've, I've kind of taken that to heart cause it's, it's always fun getting somebody else that you can bounce ideas off of talking points off of you just keep chatting back and forth and again, bouncing things off of each other and, and seeing what sticks and what makes chat happy and what you guys have fun with. Um, sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll stop rambling about, about collabing on that one. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's something I've, I've taken from other people. I think that's been a, been a theme for the night, though. People really love collabs from the audience perspective and the streamer perspective. Like, I mean, maybe I wasn't underestimating them, but it's been such a recurring theme throughout the whole night that I, maybe, you know, we should all take a second look at it because, like, people just love hanging with the, bro with the boys, it looks like. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely not something you should do for, like, every stream, but, like, uh, on my own, like, my group, I tend to, I try to do Friday night group nights. Uh, sometimes it work, doesn't work out. I mean, it, it just is what it is. I just think that group work, um, it just brings out another dimension of your character because you're bouncing between another person and they can kind of draw out more from you. Um, like me and last, we, like you talked about before, me and last stream like uh, together last week, that was probably one of the most fun streams I've had ever. Like it's just, it's in that, it's just because like just that, um, just because you know that both of you have a cert, well, well, like in reality, we both have a goal to be as entertaining as possible and to have like that partnership and that chemistry, like it just, it like to have that between people, it's, it's all, it, like it adds a lot. So being able to sort of like mix that into your content, I think is, is, um, is imperative. In my opinion. 
Azure uh, Azure Wolf asks um, a question that all of us have, a few of us have already answered in chat, but I'd love to get uh, some brief uh, clarification on it or clarity on it. Uh, also, okay, a lot of people always talk about being nervous on cam, but is anybody weird about their voice? Um, I'm going to expand that a little bit. Um, because I think that nobody really likes their own voice, but does it affect you streaming? Is I think the key question for the panel. Yeah, um, actually, I have issues with uh, doing voice acting on my stream. I have to make sure that no one can hear me. Like, it's a weird thing I have, but um, like, my parents are like one and two in their rooms and like they're I don't they don't really know much about like what I do in here in terms of streaming and stuff but there's literally sound like soundproof foam over here to like maybe turn uh dial back those decibels here but the last thing I want to want to hear like after a stream when I'm doing just doing a voice <laughs> and and suddenly like my parents are like what what the what the fuck are, fuck you, are you doing, doing? in there <laughs> You know what I mean? So it's yeah. a little bit like <laughs> it keeps it, it makes me a little subconscious sometimes. But in terms of my own voice, I mean, you're you, nobody likes their voice, and it's scientifically proven. You can't really control. Yeah, them, you right. You know what's worse than parents is uh, non gamer <laughs> roommates. Oh, that's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a sh that's sh I mean, even gamer roommates sometimes. I mean, I I I, I hear uh, Iskin and Demo walking you, around outside sometimes. What are you trying to say, Val? I hear them walking around outside my room sometimes as I'm streaming, and I'm just like, oh, man. I'm going to say something weird. I'm going to do something mean, and just, like, hear them laughing at me from outside. Mean meanwhile, last year, Demolition Dog is Wendy Oldbag in the Phoenix Wright games. <laughs> <laughs> Beat <it>, Miles Edgeworth! <laughs> like, but uh, along no those shame. lines, like, I, I, I go back and watch some of my streams sometimes just a little bit here and there to see how certain parts went and how they sounded and things like that, and I I despise hearing my own voice. Like I I hate hearing my own singing. Um, I know I've lost some of my tone since the times of choral group and stuff in high school, but like I I hate hearing myself talk on streams or off streams. Um. So yeah, weird about my voice, definitely. Yeah, I used I, to. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was someone who always wanted to sing bass and I come from a long proud line of first tenors. So I feel the, uh, the vocal <laughs> disconnect there very strongly. And there, there are times where like, I'll, if kind of like Valiant said, like if I go back and watch my, uh, watch a stream or something where I had a good pop off, like I want to make a clip or something. I, sometimes I have to actively sit there and be like, nobody else hears this the way I do. Like this clip is still worth it. It just pains me. But, um, but yeah, it's uh, so being weird about your voice is definitely something I feel, but also know that it's mainly a me thing. So I guess it's it's something I'm trying to grow past, but it, it really is something that's like always bothered me. I mean, it was something I used to worry about. Um, but in listening to enough clips and like I've tried to like edit down bods and stuff and just in listening to like me talk for four hours i'm like that's just what i sound like <laughs> people haven't said i sound weird so i guess i'm fine I, it's that's not something normal. i worry about as much currently that's kind of where i'm at like i mean i don't like my own voice a lot of people don't scientifically proven so says uh, our panel Angel. but uh no one else hates it so i just try to ignore it and i don't edit my own videos or i don't edit videos of myself that often and maybe i would hate it more if i started editing my vods more often but at the moment i'm i'm good but you know what what drives me nuts is when i go back to a vod and i say why did i say that that was so unfunny oh, <laughs> that's man. a whole <laughs> other thing oh, that's that just me so life, much man <laughs> it's I couldn't like when be you're talking to yourself the entire time and just suddenly you say something because you're trying to be funny and it just doesn't work and you know it doesn't work. You reflect back on it later. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> Damn, I really said you peace 12 times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> One of those moments you're like watching a clip back and you, you said something. You're just like, I just actively ruined this. 
Oh god! <laughs> I wish I was playing copyrighted music just so Twitch would have muted that for me. <laughs> Dem- Demolition dog. The secret is to regret it immediately instead of later. <laughs> oh, I can credit immediately and later. It's yeah, just, just yeah you get those, the second dose and you regret. So, so yeah. I want I want to hear uh, TSF. Do you do you have anything on these topics so far? Voice is definitely a thing for me. I've all I don't know. I've always felt a little <laughs> weird about my voice. I don't hate it, but it's always just kind of seemed off to me. And maybe that's just me, but it's how it is. Camera. Uh, not so much. I mean, even though I am on camera, I'm still up here alone. So there's that that space between monitors, I guess, that kind of makes it better for me. Like if I was trying to stream in front of a live audience, I'd just be completely frozen up. Oh, I feel but that, man. <laughs> I um, some tangentially related. Um, I had done streams that have had like. Back or back when I was in like college, I had done a stream that maybe have had like ten thousand viewers or twenty thousand viewers, and it like didn't phase me at all. Um, not you know just a broadcast like a sports broadcast. But then um, the first day I had to run the video board for a baseball stadium, I was I had terror. I couldn't do it. I was so scared because every time I pressed a button, like the four thousand people in the stadium was gonna see the button that I pressed, and I was like, I don't want to press the button. That's a lot of responsibility. As like <laughs> four days prior, I'm like playing a piano on a switchboard, like for a soccer broadcast with three times more viewers, and like it makes a big difference. The the divide matters a lot. Seeing your audience, seeing their reaction. Yeah, and there's a good disconnect of of being behind a computer screen. I mean, it still it still plays on my anxiety really hard when I had a when I tried to have a camera active. Uh, I I could play it off a lot of times because like playing games and stuff and and chatting with people, but there was still the anxiety at the back of my mind the whole time. So, but but if like like you guys were saying, like if it was in front of an audience, like. If if those people were actually there watching me in in my room or on a stage or whatever, I I wouldn't be able to do anything. You know I'd what? Be, I'd be scared stiff. You know, you said something just now that I've thought about a lot though. Where um, sometimes you know you might get bummed out that you have like four viewers or three viewers, but every once in a while, I imagine them as people chilling with me in my room, and it helps a lot. Like, oh man, there's just like people chilling, like in my room, watching me play games. Like, I'm down for so that. So I, I can do that with collab collaborators. Like, like that's a big thing with 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 collaborators for me. It, it feels like a good couch co-op. It feels like they're there with you. But mm-hmm. as far as viewers go, I I can't imagine that, or else I'll I'll start uh my voice my voice will start cracking more. I'll start stumbling over my words even more. You know, just just how it goes. Something that kind of helped me with that in kind of both directions which makes sense in a second but like a comment um one of your mods gavin steel cobra made to me one time was that he, he uh he mentioned that he never streams with the viewer counter on because then he just doesn't think about it and that's kind of nice if you're if you're the kind of person who gets anxious when you see that number get bigger that's helpful uh but also if you're the kind of person who gets anxious when it's like a one or a two that's also can be helpful because then you're just streaming and if somebody says something in chat now you engage with chat and then you're back to doing doing what you're doing you're not worrying about it so that was kind of kind of tangentially related to that topic but um does anyone does anyone here uh stream with their uh metrics hidden uh i've since i started mine have been like in the background like I pop out my Twitch chat onto my side monitor, and then my games are on my main monitor. I don't even look at OBS or, or the the Twitch, um, web browser thing anywhere. So I don't I don't see a count regardless. I keep my metrics on because it has my chat, and I know I can pop it out, but just because of the real estate on my <laughs> monitors and stuff, it just uh-huh. works best for me. But it doesn't really bother me. But, um, I do I do tend to change like my my sort of um, approach to certain things as it changes, admittedly. But beyond that, like, um, <clears throat> yeah, I do. I, I see my metrics. I, I don't, like, fuss over it or whatever um, until they hit, like, if I, on the rare chance it might hit, like, double digits. And I'm like, oh, baby, 10 viewers. 
I think I feel right now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that mood. No, but no, thank you. Thank you to all the streamers, by the way, uh, uh, who uh, all, all of you who have uh, reposted us to your audiences. And um, I, I really appreciate everyone who's visiting and stopping by. And please, everyone who's in my chat, please go uh, with that massive amount of links that got dropped at the beginning of the panel. Go back there and start clicking and uh, following everyone on the panel. Um, I think we'll start wrapping up to closing thoughts unless anyone else has an open topic they want to talk about. Uh, I've got a question. <clears throat> Please. Um, have you guys um, put any thought into changing platforms more than ever? That's kind of an yes. option for people right now. I've been thinking Especially about with it. Ludwig moving. It's like made me think like, I don't know, maybe YouTube is kind of better. I, I, been... and I haven't like committed to anything yet, but I'm just wondering what you guys think about Twitch as a platform, assuming you all stream on Twitch, I don't actually know. I, I've, uh, I've been, been uh, to it personally. I've been thinking about more than ever. I don't know if I'm willing to do it just yet, but I've been thinking about more than ever. I, I mean, don't know if like, any... go for it. Sorry, go ahead. All right. Um, I don't know if any of you have been following like uh, Ludwig through the transition and everything, but uh... he got banned. He had a bad first well, few yeah. days. Been banned a few times. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, but um, but like after moving to YouTube, uh, just the way he's been treated by, I, I will say, I don't like Twitch as a company, and uh, that view has only grown stronger with the way they've handled the man who earned them the most money in twenty twenty one of it, anybody. And, and if, if Kane, and if no one <laughs> knows the direct piece of drama that Iskin is referencing, there is that uh, Twitch. You recently did their uh, Twitch recap rewind video or whatever, and completely removed Ludwig from it completely. Yeah. Wow. wow. Um, yeah. Uh, on my front, I my goals aren't necessarily related to the platform I'm on, but if the platform I'm streaming on restricts, <clears throat> excuse me, restricts me to a point where I can't produce the content I want to, then I think about the move because re realistically, my my all my shit is on twitch like my follower counts on there if i move to youtube nobody's gonna know um it's just the, har the harsh reality of it so i've got to i've just got to stay put and until i can still continue what i'm doing um it's not really something i'm considering right now but yeah also I, I, this clip. I have to like think that the majority of my viewership would move with me to youtube if i decided to I think, I would like to think, because I don't have that many, like, non-community viewers. I will also say, I despise Twitch a lot of the time, but YouTube just removed the dislike button. They are very capable of being as bad as Twitch for different reasons. Maybe they're, not, maybe they're just less personal about it, and that's why we care less, but, like, they've done some pretty dumb stuff, too. Very yeah, I recently. can't necessarily I can't. give any favoritism to any, like, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook... Don't get me started. I can't like I can't like say that I like any of them like as a company. I think it goes a little with what Yaz was saying, where it's like, well, what what's it gonna mean for me? Like, what does it do for me to be there? Is there a problem with where I'm at that it's stopping me? I don't know. Will people follow me over there? Is it a better discoverability thing? That's all kind of vague. I don't really know. I'm just kind of looking to get what people thought about it. VOD, think, archi uh, oh. VOD archival <laughs> on YouTube is kind of like the biggest technical draw to moving to YouTube. But at my size as a streamer, what is what does VOD archival matter when it's going to get 30 views? Uh, Can I, mean, I say something? Yeah. Because I want to respond to somebody else's uh, comment here. Because they're saying, if you have less than 5,000 followers, you shouldn't think of followers as a reason to stay on one platform or another. Um Sure, I get I get your point in the sense that like you know it's you'll probably just gain another following on the other platform, but like I don't really have a like I don't think a lot of us have like the most effective way of reaching out to everybody we can to make that transfer to like allow like, allow everybody to make sure that they see the content because at the end of the day I want my viewers or fan like any any of my viewers or fans uh, for lack of a better word to view what I produce and that's that's my that's my main goal. And um, that's just the most effective way of me doing that. So, yeah. Sorry to <laughs> sorry to derail that. If I were really generous and say that nine out of ten of my viewers, and I mean literally ten, like the number ten of my viewers made it to YouTube with me, <laughs> I still lost ten percent of my viewers. <laughs> right. 
I, that's I really generous. I was trying to say something earlier. Uh, what were you going to say, bud? Oh, sorry, sorry. To answer Curbs, who just put in chat, if you're an affiliate on Twitch, you can't dual stream. You, uh, you by policy, true, yeah. cannot. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Iskin. Uh, well, you kind of answered it a little bit, but um, yeah, or what you guys are saying um, is that and it was something I was going to mention too um, when I saw that in chat um, is that if, if you have a small enough following and you only look at it as a metric, then moving to another platform isn't really a big deal. But for a lot of us, we've got, even if we only have, you know, a handful of, of uh, followers and everything, like if we have that core audience of like three people who are in, every stream, every other stream and stuff like that. Like as I was saying, without in Gavin's case, um, a lot of those viewers are members of the community on discord. So it wouldn't be that difficult for him to reach out and, um, and make a transition like that. Uh, for a lot of us, we are kind of, um, or like we kind of, uh, live on other people's discords and it would be a lot harder to, bring a community um it's true yeah so uh I, if i can jump in here uh, i was gonna say to 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 go along with the the initial question i don't feel any particular way about switching between platforms they they each have their problems and to me it's it's really a matter of the devil you know like twitch has its issues we know its issues we know they're going to keep doing these issues because they're just going to do what they do. But YouTube has its own issues. Are they really worth trading for, especially when you never know what they're going to do next? You know, yeah, I, it's all kind of up in the air as far as I see it. It's like, it could be good. It could be bad. I don't really know. Yeah. Okay. I say that this is really fun. This panel. This is like my first one. I'm this enjoying. So I'm enjoying this panel. Yeah, I was trying to end it. And I'm like, I can. No, keep no, talking, no. I can man. keep you talking for like two more I'm, hours. I can. I'm, go. I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that you guys are good. We can. We can. As long as we have things to talk about, I'm happy to I talk mean, about them. I and, live in the West Coast. And, and, and honestly, <laughs> if if you'd be up for it, Gavin, I wouldn't even mind like grabbing some folks from the other panels if they're still around. If they wanted to join the just an open discussion. Um, that That's might be a little. Be that might be a little too big. I will say that if we we can keep talking as long as we have things to talk about, and if somebody needs okay. to go to okay. bed, they can mention it in in our private chat in the background, so we can make it a really clear transition. But um, I also want to say uh, a last note on the platform thing is um, I have toyed with the idea of streaming like four days a week on Twitch and maybe doing a unique one YouTube stream a week or something like that, just to kind of like split up and test the waters. That's that's kind of uh, my thoughts on YouTube that are actually actionable. You were talking about bot archival being much easier on YouTube. All roads lead um, to VTubers. It's the algorithm. Everyone wants a piece of it. Everybody's got to be a VTuber. Yeah. Um, do you guys post anything to any of the other platforms? Like, I know I, I will occasionally post things to um, YouTube and TikTok as, like, shorts. It's just a kind of a, an extra little thing I do. I don't expect any like kind of huge return out of it, but I'll just, you know, I'll put it up just to put some chum in the water, you know? Do you guys do anything like that? I uh, followed this you. really cool streamer or this really cool streamer named Pushing Head on TikTok the other day. <laughs> <laughs> it's been, it's been from some pretty cool, inspiring content, actually. Yeah, <laughs> Gavin and I DM each other TikToks. It's very fun. <laughs> I, I don't post anything on any other platforms. Um, I mentioned back when I when I first tried streaming, uh, I did make a few videos and put them on YouTube back then. I think they've since been deleted. Um, but yeah, no, I I'm too lazy. I don't I don't feel like taking the time to to make those videos. I don't know how to, and I'm too lazy to actually like figure it out and research it. Uh, it's to me, it's just not a big big deal. Yeah. But Yang said a lot of there's plenty of streamers who just get huge off of TikTok and that that wave kind of carries them. Oh, and I think Yang. <laughs> I think it's just um I don't know probably prudent to uh have your fingers in as many pies as you can if you have the time or ability or desire to do it. 
I know that I personally just kind of enjoy cutting down things into shorts. I think it's just kind of fun to mess with the clip for a minute. Um, but for some people, that's just not very fun to do. And maybe you just don't like the editing process. Maybe you just don't care about other platforms and their audiences or whatever. It's not like a, I'm not judging anybody for it. Uh, you know? yeah. A few people... of those things. I... Go uh, ahead. I have I a think... longer opinion. Okay. Uh, I think um... it's one of those things that kind of depends on your goals. And like, like pushing says, if it's, so... if video editing is something you enjoy, then, you know, it great. Um, but if not, it kind of comes down to what your goals are because it's very difficult to organically grow just on Twitch. I, um, it's funny that, uh, you, that Yang mentioned TikTok and Pushy mentioned TikTok because I like followed a streamer on TikTok back when she like only had a hundred followers. And then like, over the past six months, I've kind of just been like, she's showed up on my For You page, and now she has about 2,000, and I've like, by the video, watched that TikToker grow her stream, and it's kind of like, it, it, it is, I mean, when you see it like happen in front of you, it definitely reinforces the idea. It's going makes the biggest point, and uh, the, so, at the end of the day, Twitch alone will not make you big. It really just won't. Um, it can, but it's really, 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 really astronomical. It's astronomical, chance. right? It's not sound logic, right? Um, every YouTube video, and this is the Ludwig way of thinking, by the way, the Ludwig theory is every YouTube video is a lottery ticket. And every piece of content you make is a lottery ticket that might come over to your Twitch. You are making content and it might get discovered. And you can uh, make good videos that are more, better lotto tickets, put a power play on it. But TikTok, kind of the same way. Every TikTok is a lotto ticket. Every YouTube video is a lotto ticket. I actually uh, came just short to putting in my 2022 goals in the keynote, make more content on YouTube. Because I'm like Valiant. I'm lazy. I don't know if I can. I cannot confidently make that. Uh, I can't confidently make that uh, commitment. And I'm comfortable with that. Like, I don't know if I want to blow up, frankly. And yes, um, to Two Curbs and to Yang's answer, yes, you can uh, live stream on TikTok. But not many gamer TikTok live streams. There's a bunch of weird TikTok live streams, man. <laughs> I saw one. This is totally off topic. I saw one where a dude just put, like, all those billiard balls on a treadmill and just <laughs> ran the treadmill. And the winner was just the one that stayed on the treadmill the longest. <laughs> and I was enraptured, let me tell you. I was bending it all on two. Give me two. They, uh, there's they another have... one that will do like Hot Wheels or they'll do like Mario Kart figurines. Yeah, and they'll yeah. commentate the whole thing. I saw one with fruit and onion one. Oh, that's a good one. Let's I haven't go. seen that one before. <laughs> Let's go again. <laughs> is, is it bad that you said fruit and I thought the VTuber? Yes, actually. When you were talking, Kevin, you were talking about like ideas you've stolen from other streamers. I'm sitting here thinking, I'm a weeb. I watch VTubers. There's nothing for me to steal. <laughs> uh, I don't feel like I would ever want to blow up. Like, I've seen some people, just a few that have blown up that I knew before and after. And it really does change you. Like, it's not like they went from being great people to terrible people. They're still great people. But, like, when you have that much of an audience, and this is just me, like, kind of speculating off of some of the things they've told me. Mm -hmm. It's like when you have that level of an audience, you also have that level of expectation you have to meet, right? Like, if I'm just streaming on Twitch with a couple of you guys, that's chill. Like, we're just having fun. But when you've got like everything you do blowing up chat on the side and people screaming at you to do this or do that, and you've got to keep all these people happy, like suddenly it's more effort in the stream rather than just streaming for the fun of it. I feel like that would kind of defeat the purpose of I, just I honestly, having fun. I honestly don't know what I would do if that happened. Like I, I would like to say that I would just like try to continue to be my chill chill self and maybe do some like 
just chatting streams if I had that many people, but like, really, I don't know. What do y'all hate money? Says Gang and Chat. <laughs> That's uh. Yeah, and you want to send me some money? I'll take it with gratitude. But uh... <laughs> hey, I'm gonna stay awake longer tomorrow. If you send me. Money. When you send me tomorrow, I'm gonna sleep uh, later. So, um. Oh my god, dude! When I saw your your sub numbers, I was like, "Holy! I gotta get on these marathon streams, man! <laughs> That's where it's at." <laughs> I uh, I'll stream for thirty hours. You want to pay? Me? I I have without a subathon. It was just okay. Let's just go as long as we can. <laughs> my longest stream was like six hours. <laughs> it's like, hold on, uh, streaming done... for twenty plus hours makes you money. <laughs> I've done ten hours with Iskin and three steps here. That was last year's karaoke. Oh, that was well. Fun. Well, pushing hat. You have to realize that people really enjoy you staying up longer, especially when it leads to antics such as breaking your tooth. Breaking in the middle of a your stream. tooth. Yeah, uh, uh, tell, I still hear it in my that. mind. It's actually really funny because Yang and Chat came to visit me in DC the following week, and when she landed, I was like, "By the way, in two days, I ha have a dentist appointment." <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know this broken tooth story. Can you share that with I me? I was eating or... pasta <laughs> on the marathon stream for breakfast. <laughs> that face. <laughs> and I used... Yeah, because it's pasta. So I was... No, no, it was... It didn't break it on the pasta. I didn't break it on the pasta. I was waiting for it. Like, was, yeah, it was like, cook, I, did, okay? like, I left one of the ends out of the spaghetti and like I just bit it to the hard end. Anyways. <laughs> it, what happened? Well, what happened it's was I had, I, had a silv I had a stainless steel fork and I held it like this at an angle, and I glanced over at Twitch chat and talked and bit at the same time. Oh. And, yeah, Pushing's next message in chat <laughs> will forever be my highlight of the story, which is, I'm never eating with non-plastic silverware again. Oh my <laughs> god, man. I, I, I eat with plasticware, like, half the time. I just told that story yeah. yesterday. My coworker got a root canal. And I was Ooh. like, yeah, we're a streaming company, so it was relevant to mention, yeah, at least you didn't do it live on stream with your oral Ooh. surgery, right? Yeah, it happened to me, too, with the fork thing. It's not fun, because you feel that, you hear, like, a weird foreign noise when you bite. It's so like, bad! What, what was that? What was that? You feel different. You feel like, well, I heard, like, a crack. I heard, uh, like, what was that? The metal? Was that, like... And then you kind of feel around your mouth. You're like, shit. I haven't gone back. <laughs> I haven't gone back to watch the clip. I know I, that there's a clip of it. I refuse. I know the <laughs> feeling because I bit into a popcorn kernel and chipped one of my teeth. Oh, God, I hate, um, the, I hate the, it so much. The worst part was, for the remaining yeah. 10 hours of the marathon, I was just licking my tooth you're trying just, to like, figure out. Your teeth. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, st I still do it sometimes. I get stuck on, on that feeling that annoys me. What questions Azure, spawned all this? Azure asked if, uh, what makes We're talking about big. marathon stuff. Oh, yeah, we were talking about marathons. What's your level of blown up? What do you consider big? I consider big when I can't, uh, get the people I... The well, yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. if I had an open lobby and I had to worry about who's in the lobby, that's when I know I'm probably a little too big. I don't know, I think for... For me, like uh, uh, an end goal, if there was one, is to be big enough to, you know, pay my bills. You know, just be comfortably full time, not have to worry about it. Right? I don't need to be as big as as Ludwig. Right? That's a lot. I did the math on that at one point and was like, "Holy shit! <laughs> 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 I need a lot more subs." YouTube videos are a lottery ticket. Yeah. Well, one one of the main things is that once you pass a certain point, it's less about the subs. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure some of you watched that disguised toast video where he broke down his income. But like, once you pass a certain point, it's more about who's going to sponsor you because you're going to make more yeah. than that. Yeah, you I mean, my my legends. thing was like I was just basing it off of like the steady, stable ish income of subscriptions because that was the only reference point I had. But yeah. I was I think, just gonna say, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, I, I think that, um, I think my my definition of of big for myself would be when I actually have enough people in chat to where I have to stop every so often and read. 
Mm-hmm. Like, like I, can't, I can't just like glance over, read a message, and respond to it. I have to actually like stop and scroll or or something. Actually, mine is the opposite of that because <clears throat> just like just like Pusheen uh, just said earlier, yeah, like you know, paying my bills and making a living off of it is one like milestone. But the next, like what I consider to be big, um, like really big blown up is when i can look at chat and interact with like the just just like what i can catch within the chat and just sort of bring that into the picture and like um not that i don't like interacting with chat as each individual but when it comes to a point where like i see something really good and i can bring that up instead <laughs> i don't know i like, I like that. <laughs> yeah this guy like, never responds fun. to me in chat at all never not one bit <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess my my version of too big would be the point where I look over and all I see is a wall of emotes. That's just <laughs> that that can be when, a little once annoying sometimes. Yeah, once your chat devolves to is just spam, uh, unless you have one of those chats that's just like Giga Brain, like a uh, Zentry or something like that, then it's just like it's 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 too hard. At that point, it's like I'm no longer uh, interacting with my chat. I'm just the clown on stage entertaining all of these people who are you're you're responding to the crowd mm-hmm. yeah and and i'm not overly a fan of like group think what um, <laughs> what's the perfect sized audience kind of depends on your audience i think yeah um because like I, i've seen some twitch streamers with like 1200 people and it still is a very well-behaved chat and all good and everything and i've seen chats with like 200 people and it's very spammy and not the kind of thing i would want okay Gavin, yeah, I side chat. judge yourself definitely so, depends on the audience yeah which i think part of that kind of just emphasizes how important it is to be proactive in fostering the kind of community you want long term as it starts to grow like there are a lot of there are a lot of streamers who i see who um end up kind of struggling with issues that they create for themselves because they don't go out of their way to make clear what they do and do not want their community to be like. That's a little worry of mine. I'm like, what if I just let something slide one day and then it turns into a thing and I can't shut it down now because it's already grown. I'm a very non-confrontational individual and that's, that's a fear of mine is like, I I don't ever want to be in the position where like somebody feels like I have let them, like grow into something because I didn't want to confront the issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm all about chaos in chat. I have fun, but like it, it still needs to be able to be orderly chaos when you need it to be. It's funny because our first panel of the night was the uh, streamer audience panel. It makes a good audience member. Um, a lot more wholesome of a discussion than wall of emotes flaming the chat streamer. <laughs> oh, what makes a good uh, chatter? Oh, man, I just love it when I can just put so many emotes in the box, man. That's great. <laughs> I mean, turn on emo- emote only mode. Make everybody happy. What were you going to say, uh, Nathaniel? Um, What was I going to say? Uh, I was... Uh... I would say Gavin's version of too big is when a Noida vote comes up and there's three digit votes on each option. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it'd even be two digit votes for him. It was wait, kind wait of um, each option has two digit votes. It was kind of not overwhelming, but maybe it was only because it was uh, we were doing a commentary for a match. But like, I had to like settle this in my mind really quick when we did that Wargroove tournament, and I had 125 viewers on my Twitch chat. Ooh. Like, I had to like come up to terms really quick with how do I act with a three digit viewer count at the moment, right? Like that. Oh yeah, sorry. Go ahead. It was if it were just me entertaining chat, I would have shit breaks. Like, thank God it was in the context of a tournament. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that something similar happened to me when I was speedrunning Mega Man X. Um, I was, you know, streaming. I beat my I beat my PB, and I was on a run that I was running it back. I was 18 seconds ahead, which is pretty big. And the world record holder at the time rated me with like 50, 60 people. So then that pressure started to hang on to me, and I was visibly nervous. Apparently, so it's like it's like yeah, with you know with the tournaments, like it's cool because you're running a tournament and. 
<laughs> you can just handle things. But with me, it's like I actively have to do my best while like it's, like they came from literally the best in the world to me. It's like fuck. Yeah, it's it's definitely yeah. a different experience when you're the host versus when you're the content. Yeah, and and <laughs> and speaking of of Gavin with your your thing, uh on the upside, you have a lot of good mods. Oh. So oh. they they definitely help. They, Hard they would disagree. Help. Okay, okay, by, shut up. It's by the way, <laughs> the, the war group thing is where Curbs came from. By the way, Curbs in my chat right now. He's he's retention from the uh, war group thing. The one out of 125 who still survived in Twitch chat. <laughs> oh. Ow. Yeah. Is there anything anyone uh, forgot to mention during any of these questions we had? Maybe got talked over. I know sometimes we got a little out of hand with the with the talking. This will make no, oh, yeah, we last do. round. Thanks, Gil, being a good moderator. I'm sorry. I'll do better next time. <laughs> <laughs> it mostly right at the end. Once uh, everything kind of kicked off, we just started talking. I just wanted to, I don't know, open up the floor for anyone who wanted to re-answer if there was something maybe they forgot. That's it. I mean, I I'm, I'm still open to any questions from chat if anybody has questions are of course fine as well La last how do you feel I'll... about like game codes give them to me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you free, free games? it's kind of sick <laughs> sometimes indie devs will just be on twitter and be like hey streamers do you want a copy and i'm like yeah i'll take a copy of the game how do you guys uh, feel about free shit how do you guys feel about giveaways like on um like them. Like, what it depends. Mean? Like I'm doing a I'm doing a giveaway tomorrow where I'm going to do a, a thirty dollar fifteen dollar drawing in Marvels on stream just to people who show up. I don't I say that to flex or anything, but like oh, I okay, find this it guy's got me <laughs> to do whatever he's gonna play Marvel <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. But 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 like I mean I view it kind of as like on like like seventy percent. A reward for my community for sticking with me and my appreciation for him, and thirty percent I want to do something cool so people stick around, right? Like, where where are people's thoughts on giveaways? I think um, they're a great idea if you can manage them. Yeah, yeah I think I'm, I have nothing against them. I'm like, you know, I've done my like a couple of giveaways here and there, but I mean, nothing. I have no thoughts, um, like specifically about them. Just you know, if I, all right, my my audience, like just like you said, like a cool way to reward your audience for. You know, your their dedication. Damn, was it really that bad of a question? Shit. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm, this is okay. <laughs> I would be, I'd be personally a little worried about doing like some kind of giveaway to a, in like a general like, hey, anybody can come in because I feel like it would um, it has the potential to to backfire and not actually reward anybody <laughs> in the chat or anything. Like if you post, I'm giving away a PS5. To my viewers, and you've got like thirty viewers, but then you're giving away a PS5. Maybe like eight hundred people plus. Do you remember? Show up. Oh, I don't think. I think this was before everyone. I, th I think Demolition Dog is the only person uh, who would actually remember this. But we used to have a dude named Choco in the OMG Yum Yum server. If anyone even recognizes any of those names, they are they are an old timer. But he was the one who ran GGWP Apparel in the early days of StarCraft II. Partnered with CLG, and a year later did a t-shirt giveaway for every shirt in the apparel collection. $300 worth, and it was a toss-up between his three viewers in chat. Wow. <laughs> I'm picturing wow. a shirt cannon at like a a, a dead just, sports game. Uh, Amy <laughs> <Matt> <laughs> just, just fires the cannon like five rows up into the audience. Everyone's on the front row, like. <laughs> I was gonna say, I guess I didn't get just, that one. They're point that blank, one just hobbling his way up the stairs to get it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like the baseball games at like peak COVID, where there were like ten people in the whole stadium. Balls would just fly out to seats. Someone will kind of meander over, like, oh, I guess I'll grab that. Yeah, Yang has a good question that I think is going to be fun to answer. I'm sure everyone has thoughts about this one. What games would you avoid streaming if there are any? Like, genre-specific titles just wouldn't make for a good stream? Well, let me tell you about this game called Tales of Blank. That's a 60-hour <laughs> epic RPG that you will... I No, I think the... 60? I, I think the general answer to this... 60 plus. ...is um, if it's too long of a game that uh, I will lose audience over, 
because they can't watch all 80 hours of the playthrough, that's a good start for a bad stream game. Any um, game that requires grinding. Ooh, that too. Mm. I was going to say any game that is so far into its meta that um, I can't even keep up. Like, I will never play League of Legends just because it's so... First of all, I don't like that game. I don't care for Bubba's. But, um, hang on, my monitor just shut off. Okay, anyways, <laughs> um, anything that involves uh, just having to keep up after decades of progress and... One sec. I can't get into Tarkov because of that. Mm. Tarkov is yeah. a good example of a recent oh. game that I can't like break I, into. I, I got fix my monitor. Tarkov is also like the most anxiety-inducing game I've ever heard of. It has voice. Uh, it has voice IP now, though in game. So like, there are a lot better? of there are a lot of funny <laughs> clips on TikTok right now of two people having a standoff with a pistol and talking to each other over it. Yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Let's see, uh, it's getting put into chat of Pokemon JRPGs and most MMOs. I, uh, <laughs> I played Pokemon on stream a little bit. I ended up playing it a lot off stream because I loved it too much and didn't want to restrict myself to just playing it on stream. Yeah, uh, that's... And that's really the problem that comes into, into play for those other ones for me. Pokemon doesn't really make you grind, like, obsessively, though. Not like... Not anymore, really. I think it depends yeah, on how you play it. Like, there's plenty of people that have been playing um, the new Diamond and Pearl remakes, and while they're grinding consistently and hunting for shinies, they're just like engaging with their audiences, and it becomes very chill. It's a very chill thing. It's like you're not worried about the game. It's just kind of there as background noise while you chat with the streamer. A.K.A. Calliope Mori with her almost Jumping two 12-hour streams. Yeah. <laughs> I have actually not watched any of those. Just well, trying it helps. to get a shiny gear, you know. To be fair, okay, okay, but but let me, okay, so 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 that's another important point, by the way, that the amount of games that are streamable games for you or not depends on your stream audience size. That too, right? With it's a lot easier to just chill and like grind fighting games or grind jump king or grind uh, getting over it. When you've got like 50,000 people that you can just talk to, right? Mm -hmm. But if I did any of those three things, my two viewers would fall asleep 30 seconds into the call and leave, right? Yeah, you, you basically have to turn it into a podcast where you happen to also be playing the game. And for, <laughs> for me particularly, that's that's really hard. I I struggle with with just talking and chatting if there's not other people around. Same. Um. So like I I played through uh, East Monstrum Knox, and that ended up being a, a lot of streams, and I I even got to a point where I'm just like, okay, I have to push through the main story because if I don't, this is going to be even longer, and I'm already starting to get tired of this. <laughs> I mean, people were showing up in chat, saying a few words and lurking, which I'm totally fine with. Don't get me wrong at all. I. I am totally fine with lurkers. I do it all the time. Uh, but they were just like listening to me in the background because it was a, it was a chill, comfy stream. But like, I wasn't really doing much. I mean, I was I was going through things, but it's a JRPG. Mm -hmm. He got all sorts of side things to do, places to explore, everything else. And I'm one of those people who will try to explore every nook and cranny that I can find. So that that doesn't lend well to streaming, in my opinion. So I probably won't be doing another JRPG on stream. Uh, just just for all those factors. I feel like games like that, you should only like JRPGs, visual novels. You should only stream games like that if you're doing it like we do, and you've got a community behind you. Because let's be real, if it was just Gavin by himself going through the Ace Attorney Chronicles, that would get so long and so tedious without all of us there for, contributing our voices because there'd just be nothing there to work with. It was not entertaining on the for flip sure. Side, on the flip side, though, Final Fantasy IX was probably my favorite, like, my favorite game I've ever streamed. So, like, it, the, a lot of that joy came from being able to kind of re-experience, like, one of my favorite games again, but also um, just from the fact that, like, a lot of, a lot of my own um, a lot of my community sort of like does enjoy that sort of thing. So like, it really depends for me, like what's, um, what sort of incentive you have to do that? I, I guess like, 
Yeah, sorry, I'm a little distracted. My monitor, I think, is dead now. So <laughs> oh, no. It's like when your That's tooth fun. breaks on stream. You can't think of anything oh, else. No. <laughs> luckily, luckily I got I got another TV right here that I can use, but it's a bummer. <laughs> that I'm so sorry. Shout out everyone, uh just rest in peace to uh, Yaz's monitor. Oh my god, that sucks. Oh, Rip. oh is that the power cord on the ground? My power bar died. <laughs> <laughs> like that's why my lamp's off. That's why the monitor's. I was wondering your light changed. I was wondering the way it was. <laughs> that's okay. Never mind. Yeah, no more. No more rest in pieces to ass. I, I, no. thought you just, I thought you just had the brightness on your monitor way up, and then when it died, it just shifted the lighting in your. Room. That's what I thought too. I actually had no idea that. Like I don't even know how it unplugged. Everything is literally behind my desk, and the the plug that it contains the. Sorry about this. The, <laughs> the plug that contains the power bar in itself is blocked by like a shield under my desk, so I can't even kick it or anything. It's like, what the fuck happened? That's amazing. <laughs> um, bumping. That's so good. <laughs> what was I gonna say? Um, I forgot. Okay, someone else go. <laughs> Um, on the topic of games I would avoid streaming, I started, like, one of those projects I do. I started, like, I wanted to um, win a game with every League of Legends champion. And I was like, I understand this is going to take a long time. I'm not expected to do this overnight. It's going to be, like, over a year plus time. But then I kind of played it. And I was like, I don't mind playing League of Legends. It's not about the meta or anything. I can play League of Legends. That's not good, but I can play it. But I can't talk to, like, chat when I'm playing it. I'm much too, like, blindered onto the game. I can't really en engage with chat as much as I would like to and still, like, play the game, right? So I would avoid, I think, playing a lot of that unless I found a solution to it, you know? I've kind of pulled that um, specific thing back into, like, an offline kind of role, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So games that would preclude me from engaging with chat is my whole answer. If I play a game and I'm like, this, it doesn't work, I will, like, instantly pull it. It'll go straight into the meat locker. I think the only locker. game... I, I, there's only two games that I abandoned this year, and I, I Pyre was the first one. And I have fully streamed a Pyre playthrough, but the second time through just couldn't do it. Um, and it was because no one wanted to watch it, and I didn't want to play it. So that combined means that I'm not playing it anymore, right? Um, and the other one was N plus plus. Still in the chat for the second one, yeah. Yep. Uh, N plus plus. I gave up on N plus plus, not because it was too hard, but because it got to the point where the final twenty levels would have been to a stream. And just, it would have been like, it, I'm a Celeste fanboy. We're having a speed run of it tomorrow. We might not actually speed run tomorrow. I don't have live, we'll see. But, um, anyways, no, I think, non okay, I'm sorry. I'm just so distracted by chat. Does anyone here in our chat want a volunteer to give an Ara Ara to chat? I think sure, that Valiant, I think that Valiant is obligated to because he's a oh. VTuber. Oh. <laughs> huh? Only, okay, so I saw that question and I was looking up an example of that on YouTube. Yes, yeah, it's too and then normal. I realized it didn't. What? Yes, yeah, it's too normal for that question. Well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a closet. <laughs> Anyways, um, so. <laughs> Well, it's time to I, I looked it up on YouTube, realizing I didn't have an incognito tab on. I was like, shit, now it's on my... <laughs> now <laughs> we know. Right. We you know from your YouTube history, you your can, algorithms you will thank you. Your, you go to your history, you can manually delete it. <laughs> that, that's how I fix my history after Demo sends me shit. Okay. <laughs> look, look, is, are any of you going to do it? Are any of you going to do it? I'll do it. I'll do it. I don't have a fan right. base to disappoint yet. <laughs> My fan base actively redeems it. There you go. <laughs> but, so, all right, then. I'll, I'll, I'll compromise, Yang. When I get affiliate, I'll put that as a channel point redemption. You got to work for it. 
That's a <laughs> channel point redemption? As if they can do it, like, anytime they want? It's like a limit point. per stream. That's what I do. I have a limit per stream, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so you guys stream? can't make me do jumping jacks all what the fuck, yes. <laughs> what did you watch? <laughs> <laughs> what was your That's example? Know. See, I'll do the hydrate one, at least. <laughs> yes, I want okay. hydrate. Okay, go ahead. That salty bet is going to kill chug, us chug, go, go, go. We're, 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 go ahead, TSF. All right. Let me hydrate and I'll do it. <laughs> My jug is empty. I'm sorry. I failed to hydrate. Challenge. I can't I can't watch him. I can't watch him do it. I just have to listen. Here. Pushing. I'll give you mine. Just just catch here. Oh, okay, just, yeah. Just... Uh, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, let me just give me a second. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> With the face right into the cam. Well played, so Jim. Well played. Me. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go in. Do it. Uh, do it. I'll do it after you. <laughs> you just did it. You did. I just did. Did you just did? I need to hear it. <laughs> what did you watch? <laughs> well, yeah, what did you watch? I'm concerned for you. Me? He's going to have to go back into his history so he can post it to our chat here. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about me. I literally yes, I know you. what that is. Yes, yeah, you're not describing no, I... what an Ara Ara is very well. You, you seem just so, so we utterly think... shocked and like amazed no, that anybody yeah. would do this. Me? Guys, I, I know what it is. It's just a matter of... <laughs> like, none of us... Like I'm. Okay. Well... Here's my compromise. <laughs> um, I will do an Ara Ara for stream the next time I am Niavin. <laughs> yeah, but I don't remember when it was, but you guys were you guys asked like Pushin, can you give us an Ara Ara? And I did it and I immediately felt like, oh god, I just did that. Oh <laughs> no, everybody everybody was dead silent afterwards too. I got no feedback. I was never more embarrassed than in like right after that moment. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I, I don't like, remember this fuck? moment. <laughs> it was fairly recent, was like it? the past few months, yeah. It was either it takes two or was it the last round table? You know what it was? It was a guilty gear lobby. Oh, <laughs> I remember now. Lobby. I do remember that now. It no, was just can't do it. Too, silent. Too many people here. <laughs> too, too many people. The walls are, walls are too thin. <laughs> walls are too thin, boys. <laughs> um, Iskin, right. Iskin, You're Iskin, gonna walk what? out. Your parents are gonna be like, "What the hell are you doing in there with your friends?" <laughs> Iskin, what's yeah. the what's the Kaguya-sama? How cute! What is that? What's the what's the oh. phrase? Oh, oh kawaii koto. koto? <laughs> <laughs> you both did it at the same time. You have to do it again. I'm sorry. Oh, kawaii koto. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, here, here you go, Yang. Ara, ara. <laughs> All right. Uh, 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 sorry yes. for no feedback. Very good, Ara, ara. Oh yes, weaves. Weaves are weaving it up. I'm kidding. <laughs> Turned his cam off. He's too embarrassed to be speaking. <laughs> he's with probably us. laughing he's his ass off. For you, like he's probably <laughs> laughing his ass off at this. This is why I don't have a camera, man. <laughs> Comes back. He's in tears. His camera's just dying. Um, dying of embarrassment. So. Kind of bringing it back a bit. Gavin, the previous two panels, you kind of had a segment at the end for the other panelists to ask you questions or to kind of throw some of the questions from the panel back um, to you a little bit. And uh, you answered, I think, some of the ones that we would have done that already. Uh, but and you already talked about your goals for 2022 and everything. I guess um, you may mention this in the keynote, actually. Did you have any particular big goals in 2021 that you felt like you nailed or didn't quite get? In 2021? Um, jeez. I didn't know. Okay, actually, wow, now I understand how hard of a question it was to you guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, my goal is always to, uh, when I come up with a plan, like the volumes, to see it through. Is how I would define my goals, typically. I don't go out and say, like, this year... I'm going to run four volumes of um, stream content and, you know, I just, my, I guess the answer to setting a goal for me 
is uh, going following through with the plan that uh, I make for the, the year before. Awesome. And... I want to note that. Sh- yeah, sorry. No, no, but... no. Go ahead. No, it's it's a tangent, so I'll let you. I didn't have anything. <laughs> I always just want to say that chat is now acting like those people at uh, panels of, of, with voice actors being, oh, can you do this line? And this line, too? <laughs> <laughs> say the line, Bart! <laughs> I hate I, to uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll say that line the way Callie said it. Ugh, okay, fine. I guess you are my little P-O-G-C-H-A-M-P. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way Terry. O H O O H O O H O. Oh, oh, it is Christmas. Oh, so yeah. Oh, ho 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 ho. Am Merry I Santa Christmas, yet? Everybody. I can't not appreciate it. Oh, because oh. Uh, I play Kareen in uh, Street Fighter Five, so she has, a good one. she has the best one. I started with her, then I stopped because I couldn't. Like Street Fighter 5. That's basically exactly <laughs> how I felt about the game. That's a mood, man. I don't know what it yeah. is about Street Fighter. It just doesn't work for me. <laughs> uh, it's fighting games that just don't work for me. Strive works because it's so fucking easy. Dude, you're so <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, you know, that was an idea that we were floating last month because we were thinking of ways to get Iskin to play fighting games. And we were thinking about having a reverse invitational where we got, like, the people we want to see playing fighting games the most into a small mini weekly bracket. I know what you mean by reverse invitational, but that sounds like we are going out of our way to be invited. <laughs> it sounds like we're excluding people. Like, Please reverse take me, Gavin, I'm so bad at this so game. The, be- the better you are, the less chance you have of being invited. Oh, man, I level <laughs> up, so let's go. <laughs> it's just we have pools, and you have to, you have to go 0-2 to make it to finals. <laughs> oh, oh! You're back. It's first to two losses. <laughs> uh, there's Gavin in the shorts. He's running. He's, He's running. running. He didn't clip the camera this time. We saw the shorts. There we go. Toe wear short shorts. Oh, what is he? What wear is that? Short skirts. <sighs> Yo, what is what is that? I can't. He's got his varsity jacket. Be gumming pools. Did I say drowning. <laughs> drowning. Oh, <poop>? drowning. <laughs> it's fucking weird. Hold on. <laughs> No, I can see it on the Discord. Board. Oh no, but you guys can see it. the stream can't see it. No, I know. <laughs> okay, yeah, forget it. Forget you guys, okay, you guys can see it. Yeah. I can't, it I can't still looks it like it's able to keep gumming in pool. Okay, drowning, <laughs> drowning in pools, and then it says. Swim team? Something varsity, varsity, varsity swim team. Swim team. Vars- varsity. That looks like an A or an S. I, like, <laughs> it is a little hard to read. I bit. thought it said drowning poo, like <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the hell is this? It's a, it's a, it's a fighting, it's a fighting game <laughs> drowning in pools jacket. <laughs> That's a good jacket. I don't get it, but it's a nice where'd jet you, looking jacket. Where, where'd you get it? Uh, I got it from uh, it the. <laughs> well, when you go like, zero, you when you know, when when you go zero and two enough in uh, in bracket, you get an honorary varsity jacket. That's no. <laughs> he's too stolen man. from the guys you in the pool. Suck. <laughs> yeah, you got your masters in failure. <laughs> I'm Doctor Failure, actually. Oh, I'm Doctor Professor Failure to you, thank you. <laughs> MD. <laughs> it's Mister Doctor Professor Failure. Hmm. Oh, man. I think. Um, <laughs> all right, chat. This is truly your last chance to ask any questions you have. Give us, help us. Um, be a good stream audience. Um, but no, I mean. This is this is great. I think uh, I just want to, there. There's actually in the video industry, there's a twenty four seven video call chat that is just people in the industry who pass through the chat on an open live stream, and people uh, you know ask them questions. It's like kind of an experts panel kind of, and it's just a constantly open chat, and uh, <laughs> and it's just like just stream twenty four maybe twelve seven or something like that, but. It's a cool idea that it makes me think, like, that would then be the worst format for something like this. Just, like, have, like, an ongoing call of some sort where we just shoot the shit about streaming for, like, all night. That's the worst idea ever, by the way, for us. 
Gavin, that is, should, that is... we should do it. At, <laughs> I, we should do I it think at I one a.m. and podcast it, Gavin. Mm. <clears throat> two a.m. podcast. No, like it's the one a.m. podcast. Me. I know, but me. we do it at 2 a.m. too. Also, you're only allowed on the 1 a.m. podcast if it is past 1 a.m. in your time zone. No mm. f- no West Coast shenanigans. Sorry, West Coast. Well, shit. They're I guess the wait until you guys are the ones behind the times. Whatever, we see things before you guys do. Like, when you guys are like, oh, that thing happened at hey. 10 p.m. It's like, well, it happened to us at 7 hey, p.m. Hey, yes. So, yeah, we we'll see think. the sunrise first. Yeah, well, I get to see the, the stars, and then the I don't know, man. I don't know what we say. Stars. I see it three hours later. I get three. Like I get to sleep. I don't know. It wakes up for the sunrise. I am up at like seven in the fucking morning and just rolling out of bed, and then just going straight to work. <laughs> Mood. Mood. It is, Mood. but like an hour and a half earlier. It's, it's dark getting... when I leave. It's dark when I get back. It's getting. I don't how, see um, the sun. This how... is not. This is not my overhead light. I'm just this pale. <laughs> <laughs> Iskin, how uh, how excited are you for uh, the live tabletop campaign for 2022? I'm, gonna, and first I'm off, pumped for it. I'm just uh, 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 announce it for everyone who didn't hear about it. Oh yeah. Um. So, looking at March for um picking players and such, but um it'll be whenever I finish my current big campaign, um which should be around March. Uh, we are going to be doing a streamed D and D campaign. Uh, I'll be writing the campaign and DMing it. We're still not entirely sure the format it's going to take. Whether it's going to be more of a server wide thing or with a, a, a traditional thing with one party. But uh, yeah, we're we're kind of in the early stages with it. I haven't really sat down and picked. Honestly, I haven't even picked a setting yet. So I've been I've been telling people if you have ideas for something you'd like to see, feel free to shoot it my way, and so I can kind of consider all of that. But uh, very pumped! Uh, it'll be the first time doing something like this produced, so it'll be interesting um, designing sessions with that in mind. And uh, I, I guess so. It it's really cool. I'm very excited for it. I'm also like. A lot more nervous because my my DMing has always been for like one or two groups of people, uh, and it'll be a little weird having it kind of out there in the wild for everyone to see. You got this, I believe. You'll we do just fine. Here. As as a player in a few of your things, like just, just you'll, you'll be fine. It could be worse. You could have done what I did over the past weekend and. Uh organized uh, our co-worker D&D campaign, which I'm excited for because I love my co-workers. But on the other hand, I can't do that weird shit. Like, all of, all of the weird shit has to be reined in a little bit. Yeah. You don't want to expose your power level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Gaffin was really willing to burn down a village full of children... Don't just say that in game. In game. In Minecraft. In Minecraft. <laughs> Why did you lead with that? It's a new client. That implies you had to escort all the adults out first, <laughs> or do something about that, and then burn it down. <laughs> so it's. A... Uh, it's just the, right. uh, yeah, the yeah. reverse Pied Piper. You lead all the adults out of town. <laughs> Well, now, now, now oh, it's dear. actually sounding like a pretty good adventure hook. But, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! All right. Kevin, what did we just talk about? Reining it in. I think. Um, speaking of reining it in, I think it is time to go ahead and call a near official close to the 2021 Gavin Roundtable. Um, Yaz, you mentioning how fun this was is all of the reassurance I needed. That made my night. Just you saying that phrase. Um, it is absolutely going to be a yearly thing. I don't know. I mean, f- Jesus, I kind of want to do them. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else hear that? Or is that something on another tab? No, no, I, I hear that. It sounded like it came through Pushing's mic. It was late. It up was. I just want to know what it was. <laughs> so, sorry, Gavin. I, let's, let's, he'll elaborate after, I think. No, no, I got paused too. But, um, you know, I mean, with the way that this one went so well, I almost kind of want to do it more often than yearly, but I'm not going to make any promises towards it. But, um, I mean, shoot, maybe we should do a series of these quarterly or something like that. 
But uh, no, this was great. Um, I, I just want to go around. If anyone has any closing thoughts to call the roundtable to a close, um, Iskin, any closing uh, thoughts? Thanks all for thank you, Saman, for being here the entire time, giving us really the the punchiest questions. You really, you truly are the the central pillar of Gavin's community. That's why you have the pillar man role. Um, uh, but yeah, so <laughs> is that why he has it? It is why he has it. <laughs> Continue. Uh, um, he is the pillar man. He is the one keeping the server. Anyway, um, thank you, Twitch Chat, for uh, giving us questions and not forcing us to sit up here and stare at each other for two hours. Um, it's I, we've talked a lot about um, the importance of interactivity, and uh, that's very, uh, very it was very much um, a good example that was on display today and i can't speak because i'm tired pushing hat any closing thoughts you'd like to give um this was very fun it was nice to just chit chat about sharing for a while it was uh, i really like the 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 structure i think last year we had a lot more like fluid of a structure but now we have i got to prep for my questions i felt like i knew a little more about what i wanted to say but I had a I had a great time, and I look forward to the roundtable twenty twenty two as well. I do too. Everyone, everyone, uh, go into the next year thinking, "Shit, is Gavin going to ask me a question about this later?" That's right. <laughs> TSF three steps far. Clever username Cody. Well, have you got a closing statement? Anything you'd like to say, Twitch, before we're on the way out? Uh, look forward to the next year when I start streaming in earnest. Everyone make sure to follow Three Steps Far. Post that man's link in chat, please, somebody. As a matter of fact, if all of our panelists could post their own link to their own Twitch chat, I would be thrilled um, to get more eyes on you guys. Um, except Yaz, who's going to be answering the question of any closing statements for the Twitch chat tonight. Oh, oh All right. Um, yeah, first of all, thanks for having me on. I, like I said, this is probably one of the like, this is really fun to do. It's really interesting to see everybody's perspective on how they approach streaming and how they're like, how they kind of approach like making content. Cause obviously, like, we all internally have our own structure of doing things and like we swear by our own, um, by our own policies. But it is interesting to sort of like kind of have an open mind and see what you guys have to say about that. So, really cool to even meet some of you. Cause I don't think I've ever spoken with, um, I don't think I've spoken with TSF, Pushing, like, well, at, and Iskin, all, all you guys at length, at least. So it's been a pleasure with that. And um, on terms of, like, closing thoughts, because we are talking about streamer, uh, being a streamer and um, our whole experiences through that, um, I think my final closing thought here, uh, that's a little redundant, but anyways, my, my final thought from all of this is we have plans and we have goals but as this this should be fun first and make sure that this is a this is a hobby about like ex exercising your creativity make sure that um you aren't sacrificing too much to you know to, 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 so that you can actually put anything together like we are now um and yeah thanks and please post your year. twitch chat in chat i was only half memeing I know. Valiant Knight, <laughs> any closing comments, thoughts you'd like to give us uh, as we close the roundtable? Uh, yeah, so one, this was a ton of fun listening to the earlier panels as well as being part of this one. And uh, thank you for letting me be part of it. And thank you to the rest of you guys for joining it. It's a, a great group of streamers to, to have this panel with. Yeah, frankly, um, I am. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I was just, just going to kind of continue the thought of like, we talked a lot about collaboration earlier and uh, while we all do our own things, we're all streamers of our own. Uh, the, the server is a, is a great place for us to, to cross paths and get together. And I, I look forward to hopefully doing some more collabs with some of you guys. Yeah. I, um, I'm happy to be part of 
Uh, one one thing I hear a phrase I hear a lot um, when I do when I have like shows that are panels like this is um, thank you to the this esteemed panel for uh, being with us today and I think that that phrase definitely rings true here. Um, I've really enjoyed um, uh, this panel um, and everyone's takes on everything. I'm gonna go ahead and close out the round table. I'm going to ceremoniously. Um, well, no, actually, I'm going to go ahead and cut to black as we leave. So, guys, have a fantastic rest of your night. We'll see you guys at the 2022 uh, Gavin XI Roundtable. And maybe I'll see some of you tomorrow at the 24 to 30 hour marathon on my stream. Wish me luck, guys, for that. D don't, don't, um, don't, don't, don't do that. Anyways, have a fantastic <laughs> one. Everyone say bye to Twitch chat now. Bye, Twitch chat. Bye, Bye, Twitch chat. Chat. Bye everybody. Later, Twitch chat.